What's going on, sports fans? It's your boy Dev of War Room Sports, and I'm here to welcome you guys to listen to episode number 202 of our podcast, The War Room. In this episode, we talked about the latest lawsuit to hit the NFL. This one's about painkillers, not about concussions. We talked a little bit about Kevin Johnson and some secrets from his past that are being dug up since he's the ringleader of the the crew trying to oust Donald Sterling from the NBA. Um, We talk about Robert Mathis and his four-game suspension for using the drug Clomid, which is a fertility drug. We talk about LaShawn McCoy versus Adrian Peterson, who's the best running back in the NFL right now as we speak. Um, The NBA draft lottery went down again, and of course, the Cleveland Cavaliers have come out with the number one pick. And last but not least, we talked with Coach Ed Dunn of Martin Luther King High School in Philadelphia, uh, PA. He's the head football coach there. He was recently highlighted in the documentary We Could Be King, um, which aired on ESPN2, produced by Dick Sporting Goods. We talked to Coach Dunn about the importance and necessity of youth and scholastic sports in America and how budget cuts have a lot of sport, a lot of athletic programs on the chopping block. Um, So make sure you guys just sit back, tune in, listen to what we got to say, leave your comments in the comment section. Welcome to episode 202 of The War Room. Peace. On all that bullshit. Love Talk Radio. Welcome to The War Room. We got Ted, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you want to end up one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise to talk sports on a national level? Both with the topic, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the fad five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates to speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys diversified and educated. What up? What up, War Room family? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you, of course, by War Room Sports on that WRS podcast network. I'm Devin McMillan, and I'm joined at the round table as usual by the best in the biz, Jimmy the Blueprint Williams and B. Austin, the HBC. The NBA Conference Finals are on. The Cavs win the number one pick again in the NBA draft, and the NFL is being sued once again. At the top of the hour, though, We'll be talking with Coach Ed Dunn, recently featured in the documentary We Could Be King, about the necessity of youth and scholastic sports in America. You guys don't want to miss that. This is a conversation that we need to have, and and we're going to do it in in a few parts because we're going to continue it next week with some other uh, special guests and educators. So um, don't miss that at the top of the hour. Um, but before we get into all that, we've got a few other topics to discuss, some birthday shout-outs to give. You know what it is. So make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room. That's blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports so you can join in the conversations. You can also call us directly when we open up that digital extreme tech hotline. Of course, that number is 323-410-0012. Now, look. During the other 166 hours in the week that you're not listening to us live, be sure to visit the new network at WRSPN.com or our main site at WarRoomSports.com and listen to some of the best talk radio the Internet has to offer, sports, lifestyle, culture, entertainment, whatever you need. The War Room Sports Podcast Network has everything. You can hear shows such as the Broad Street Line with Roy Burton and Chris Domingo, Sports Trap Radio with Brandon Pemberton, Uh, the Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Podcast with Phil and Savad and so much more. So make sure you get over to the network, check everybody out. In addition, you can still catch us in syndication on Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on FatsRadio.com. That's P-H-A-T-Z Radio.com. What's good, Generals? I got a quick question for y'all, man. It's it's, it's wedding season, I guess, because I'm I'm actually supposed to be in Jamaica for a wedding right now. Shout out to my cousin Kay. Sorry I couldn't make it. Um, have you fellas ever given given a wedding gift more thoughtful than the one that Ray J plans on giving Kim Ye? <laughs> no, Yo. man, I think that is an absolutely amazing gift, and uh, it's the gift really that keeps on giving. So <laughs> it gives to us keeps on as, uh, as viewers and connoisseurs. It gives to them in terms of economic benefit. 
it probably gives to her conscience because she's worried about uh, explaining it to her children, her child that's here and the unborn's on the way. And it gives to Kanye, because I'm sure he's a little uncomfortable uh, with him hitting it first. (laughs) For everybody out there who may not know what we're talking about, um, Ray J has decided to give uh, Kim and Kanye a check for $47,000 for their uh, upcoming wedding. And $47,000 marks the profits for the last four months, you know, for for 2014 from uh, Ray J and Kim sex tape. (laughs) The crazy part is, is after all these years, he's still making that much money. I mean, you look at 47 grand, you're like, okay, that's not that much. But this is, what, seven years after that tape was released? And it's made. It's one quarter, meaning that he gets it four times this year. Right. And the and the tape has already made fifty million dollars since two thousand seven, so yeah. So this 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 is Ray J's profit for the first quarter, and he's gonna give it to his ex boo because he hit it first um, on their I wedding. Mean, so, if I had so serious, when is when is Kanye gonna punch this dude in his lip? Yeah, he he's, he's yeah, yo, here's the thing though, man. I give Kanye credit because Ray J has been trolling him for a long time. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and Kanye just lets it slide. The funny thing is Kanye is constantly getting trolled. I saw Nick Cannon trolling him because he was talking about he hit it before even Ray J. Like, <laughs> Kanye, like, <laughs> so but Kanye just ignores it as he should. I mean, it is what it is, man. Some of Yo, y'all think out there about listening, it. If, man, y'all, if Miles Austin y'all didn't know, get a job in Cleveland last married. week, if Miles Austin didn't get a job in Cleveland last week, he might have started trolling him just to try to make some money off of it. Yeah, so shout out to Kanye for keeping it quiet, man. And for those laughing at Kanye, talking about he tried to do it. Listen, man, some of y'all wives got histories too, man. No, get me quiet. (laughs) Uh, Somebody married Karen Steppens. I don't want to hear about that. There's some of y'all like a troll out there. Let's put it that way, man. I'm going to be quiet, though. All right, but uh, shout out to Kim Ye on their upcoming nuptials. I heard it's in, in Europe somewhere, France, Italy. He married a chick from Howard University but, um, that went to Never mind. All right, so I'm going to let everybody know uh, what happened this week. While y'all were on that grind, and while you were on the grind, it's brought to you as usual by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including that NFL Sunday ticket, since they're still, you know, they still have the exclusive rights to that. I don't know how it's going to go down since they merged with AT&T. But uh, if you need that, go to our website. That's warroomsports.com. Click on the Direct TV logo. Order yourself a better TV experience at a discounted War Room Sports sign-up rate. If you call yourself a sports fan, then you got to have Direct TV. All right, headlines from this past week, man. Roddy White's brother, uh, his name was uh, Tyrone Moore Jr., 21 years old, shot and killed outside of a, a nightclub, um, in South Carolina, just uh, south of Charleston. They said he and the guy, they actually have a guy in, in custody, um, 23-year-old Darnell Lafayette. They said he and Tyrone Moore got into an argument outside the club, and then this guy just walked up to him, three shots. Two of them hit Roddy White's brother, and he is now dead. What do you guys think of this? This is crazy. I mean, in, in, in the words of my man uh, Cam, a.k.a. Rico, man, I mean, <laughs> shot every day, B. This is a sad situation. Don't do um, that. No, listen, listen to what I'm saying. This is a sad, this is a sad situation, man. And you know we're talking about it because Roddy White is a professional athlete. But yo, this is an everyday occurrence in, in in major cities across the country. It's sad, man. Like yo, cats can't fight no more. Nor do cats even want to fight. Like we're so lazy, we just rather like shoot you and get it over with, as opposed to just having a fair one and then you know keep it moving, man. What happened to the days we give somebody a fair one and y'all shake hands? And, and keep it moving, man. You can't disagree without. And yeah, that went right? out in 1950s. No, not the 50s, B. Cats are still giving hey, fair were, ones in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair ones giving fair ones in the 80s. You know, early 90s, probably probably the mid 90s. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how fair it was. We was rolling on cats in the 80s, not necessarily I mean, that's, shoot. That's not, I, I mean, I think it was I'm, fair ones in the 80s. I think the roll on started maybe. In, I mean, I mean, it didn't start, but it started being prevalent like in the, in the early 90s. In the mid '90s, that's when hip hop started to get real angry. I don't want to blame it on hip hop, but there's a lot of impressionable youth out there 
the mid nineties hip hop got angrier, dudes in the streets got angrier and they started doing what they heard. But you, and, but and you now know, it's so just out of control. Crazy, it is out of control. Here's the crazy part though, Dev. Speaking of that, because like, you know, hip hop gets a bad rap, people like to blame things on hip hop and there are a lot of impressionable young men. I'm not um, blaming. And I'm not blaming the me. parents who allowed no, no, it. No, I'm, I'm not saying you are. I'm yeah. saying people. I'm saying people in general. But mm-hmm. the funny thing is, like, um, statistically speaking, like the murder rates have come down in most major cities. It's just that now, with the 24-hour news cycle, with the availability of information, we hear more about the murders. And I mean, murder is murder, and it's always a bad thing. But the fact of the matter is, crime rates have come down in terms of murders. But I do agree with the impressionable thing, and I was thinking about this today. Like, right before we came on, me and Dev were talking about, like, some of the crazy lyrics that Big L had. But <laughs> listening to hip-hop hip back in the day, right, I would hear, listen to N.W.A., and they would tell a story about robbing a bank, and Easy would be smutting the chick in the bank while they robbing it. I never took it mm-hmm. seriously. I looked at it as right, entertainment. Right. You know, I went to see Rambo. I didn't want to leave the, the theater and start shooting people, but at what point, did like people listen to songs and want to go do that? I don't understand when that happened because to me it was always entertainment. Like you listen to country music, yo, it's more gully than hip hop. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's just that since when have people been this impressionable and how that happened? Yeah. No, yeah, because like you said, you know, you bring it to the movies as well. Like if you look at some of the stories, since it is a twenty four seven news cycle, you look at some of the stories and you see how some of these crimes are being committed. It's like you know these people are getting this right off the big screen or right off their, their you know, their iPod. Yeah. Like, people are crazy, man. So and, parents, and man, then step you, up. Your parents are in trouble, but even as a country we're in trouble because even when you think about the 24-hour news cycle, you think about the 24-hour news cycle, like why do we even have that? I mean, the fact that you all just go, listen, man, let's, let me make a long story short, man. This is all Ronald Reagan's fault, man. You know, because of the 80s. And you can really tie this together. I'm not even joking, B. Alton. You can really tie this together. Ronald, Ronald, of... Ronald let Freeway Rick get and Ollie North get busy. Yeah, but even you, you... even even with some of, some of his other policies, right? In ter- in terms of um, you know, the free market, and and, and now we have we have more 24 hour jobs than ever. People are working 24 seven, so there's people that consume media 24 seven. Do you remember when we were kids when the news used to uh, go off at night and the TV yeah, used to shut stop. down? The TV used to go off. Yo, national anthem would come on. It was a wrap. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you know you were, like you felt like a grown up. Like, damn, I'm up late as hell. Uh huh. I'm old as hell. National anthem is going, but that's gone now. Yeah. Like, yo. Anyway, man, Ronald Reagan ruined America. Man, that's all I gotta say, B. Yeah. When you were when you were real young, you, the 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 <laughs> your your whole thing was to stay up late enough to watch Saturday Night Live. You felt like an adult. Then after Did Saturday Night Live, it was like if I make it to the national anthem, what? I'm ready to go yo, out and you, smoke a yo, cigarette. Yo, yo but, <laughs> definitely growing. Yo. And, and right, be also yeah. you right. He also he also let that let that work come in too, which um we still have an effects of that as well. So all you people who um you know like to make Ronald Reagan a saint, yo, do your homework. We could blame um Al Gore too for inventing the internet. But um, yeah, he did. He invented <laughs> the internet, which led the world star. So it's you know it's Al Gore and Ronald Reagan's fault. We did everything went from Reagan. the invention of the internet to Q at World Star. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, talking about impressionable and um, Koloff and um, on a high level, there was a, a Buffalo Bills fan, a 32-year-old Buffalo Bills fan named Jack Meredith. He got a huge photo, a huge tattoo of the Bills' late owner, Ralph Wilson Jr., tatted on his arm. Um, he said we wouldn't have a team without him. He said some people think I'm crazy, but I don't care. It's my arm. Yo, is, is, you are is, a noodle. Is this, is this going too far, y'all think? Yeah, you have a tattoo of this dude's huge mug on the side of your arm. Yo, the <sighs> problem with this is it's not like it's not a bad tattoo. Like he actually sat still for about five to six hours and got a portrait, portrait. put on his arm. Like it's very detailed. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. an excellent representation of the uh, late owner. The art is great. Man on I just think it's. I just think it's another case of we're we're in a generation where, uh, Dakita Koloffing, Richard Riding, Richard Eating, and idolatry. You are gay. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like you don't get another man tattooed on your body unless. 
unless nothing. There's no there's no exception. You don't get even if it's your dad, you don't get him tattooed on your body. Right. Yeah, you definitely. Don't, I mean, man. There, Yo. there could be exceptions for that, man. If your dad did a lot for you and he passed or something. I mean, yeah. If, but if, but if you, if other you, than that, man, you look at that joint like. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Listen, man. Here's the thing, oh, though. They could possibly, possibly be an exception. I, if your pop no, passed away. It, you get your pop. I could. Yo, my pop passed away, but I'm so I'm so much of an alpha male. I won't even do that. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. like, if yo, you're not like Jimmy. Male, like, yo, that's a great. Yo, as an alpha male, like we all alpha males have this thing about personal space. Like, yo, I feel like that tat is invading my personal space. But I think some of the things that we deal with as an alpha male is like, yo, we expect other people to be alpha males. And what I'm realizing is, you know, you, you live and you learn, yo. We, we don't exist. Anymore. Yo, we are yo, shout out to LeBron. Yo, he's not an alpha male. It's great. LeBron, you know LeBron is, 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 let's tie it back to sports, right? LeBron is the best player in the league right now. But he's probably one of the first players who can really carry that torch without being an alpha male. So he's what yeah. we have to look forward to moving forward because Jordan LeBron was an alpha male. LeBron is like the NBA version of Drake in the sense that he wants to be everybody's <laughs> friend. Yo, I love it. <laughs> Yo, he wants yeah. to be everybody's friend. Like, everybody is a close personal friend of his. Like, come on, bro. Oh, if you call famous, me Drake, call me off. Rumble. Like, yo, he just called me Drake, though. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but not on the sensitive side of things. He but he wants, is Aubrey. He wants Aubrey. 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 Think about it. Drake can really rap. Like, it's yeah, a great analogy. He can. He, like, he might. What do you yeah, like, this I, new young generation, he's one of the top dogs, but he wants to be everybody's friend. He wants to be in a photo with everybody, hugging up and smiling on them like they're better than him. <laughs> yeah, like, when you just the show, yo, I totally, that's a great analogy. Like, that's where we're headed. Like, we're, we're headed to a world of non-alpha males. Like, that's just where Tricked it is. Yo, we, we are cavemen, man. Yo. yo, it's all Ronald Reagan's fault. Yo, we live on the planet Drink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, man. Into some R. lighter R. news. R.I.P. to the alpha male, man. Yeah. Hey, yo, by yeah. the way, y'all, that gentleman who got the tattoo uh, on his arm, oh, yeah. we do have to say this. Yeah. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yo, keep your yeah. hand on the button because... Yo, uh, we'd have waited any kidding. longer to do that. We would have been nominees for waiting that long to give him to JoJo. <laughs> Yo, keep your hand on the button because former Viking Bryant McKinney, he's been sued for failure to pay for lap dances over a 20-month he should be ashamed <laughs> of For the first time ever, I want to lodge a protest because I don't agree with him being a JoJo nominee for that. I don't agree with that, and I can explain why. Like, right, hold on, let me yo, tell everybody. Who who with, go ahead. You I mean, finish, and I'll explain why. Go ahead, Death. Yeah, I mean, he was sued by club owner Charles Pops Young. The suit was originally for he, his, his tab was three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and this was supposed to be for lap dances not paid for for um. You know, drinks not paid for. And the funny thing about it is one of the articles that I'm looking at, they got a picture of him and um, Stevie, Stevie J's girlfriend. Uh, what's, the, what's the chick's name? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, yeah. She, he's, posed, he, he's hugged up with Jocelyn, and everybody know, you know, she used to get down in the club. So they're saying this $375,000 tab is like, Roughly four thousand lap dances for the average person, and that's not including a tip. So he, he he originally said that the story was bogus, but then court documents say he's agreed to pay one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the club owner, um, you know, forty percent of his original bill as a settlement. So yo, know, be awesome. What you got to say about this dude, man? He, he, come on. Well, first of all, for those of y'all that don't know, because he's a lineman, so linemen don't get a lot of notoriety, your man Brian McKinney is known as much for partying and throwing down as he is for playing football. He's got a reputation all over the globe. When he when he rolls in, the Hoopers come out and throw, you know, throw themselves at his feet because the dough is going to flow. Um, my reason for saying to hold off on the JoJo is because – 
in my logic, when I go to an establishment of ill repute, a.k.a. the shaky butt, I'm trying to get as many as much as I can get for free. I ain't trying to pay for nothing. Yo, but okay. the fact that but, but, but you can use your starter to not pay for nothing. No. But there's a difference but no between no. not paying for nothing and just straight up stealing it. Like, if you're famous enough, you know, you, you get the hookup like that. But obviously he wasn't. So he just walked out the jump like like your man walked out the supermarket with crab legs. Like, that ain't cool. <laughs> Yeah, like, yo, and I also like Cuss. All them, yo, he could have smashed most of them for half of that bread. Like, what is wrong with this dude, man? And, and, he, and he has and he has a reputation, like B. Austin said. I've heard several players say, like, yo, and I hate this phrase, but this is what they say. They say he's like the turn-up king. When he's in town, like, dude rents buses and puts a bunch of heels on the bus and, like, has parties moving. Like, that, he's so like we're probably, hear, uh, we're probably about to hear about his party bus tab next. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like now, now you didn't open it. The, open up the door for. So he gets a JoJo Ward for letting it get to this to the point where we're actually discussing it and it comes out because if he is indeed the king, like they say he is, you know, it's going to be more things coming at him. Now that you settled and made, like now you gave some go away uh, money, everybody going to be like, hold up, hold uh, up, hold up. We will yeah. never talk about anything dealing with on field with Brian McKinney because he is <laughs> not that good. Exactly. Yeah, so that's the thing. If I'm going to go out and, and make my reputation as the turn-up king, I'm going to make sure I'm famous enough to get everything for free because these clubs want me in there for, for publicity. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. going to yeah. just be an average customer, and then when I walk out without paying, they're looking for me afterwards. <laughs> yeah, he's a noodle, man. I, don't, be honest, I understand your logic, yo, but... He's gonna like this is not gonna be the last we heard of uh the turn up king. Yo, that that phrase has to die by the way. Like it really does. Yeah. But uh phrase. this won't be I'm about the last to jump off the roof because of it. I can't stand it. Yeah, it definitely has to die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh Brian McKinney, I don't know what's wrong with him, but uh <laughs> one more time. <laughs> All right, so uh, last story while you guys were on the grind, we all probably know by now. Uh, Colts defense, well, really former defensive end, now outside linebacker because they switched defenses. Robert Mathis has been suspended four games for a PED violation, um, but they say that the drug that he took was actually a, a, a fertility drug called Clomid. Um, and he, he claims that he presented all of this to the league prior to them coming down with the suspension and the league basically told him FOH, you know, because he, he and his wife were trying to get pregnant. They are now pregnant. Um, and he presented all of this to the league, and the NFL said FOH. What do you guys think about this whole thing? I thought this was interesting um, because, keep, first Keep of all, in mind, he had 19 and a half sex all of a sudden. Yo, how mad are you? How mad are you at uh, – but I'm not even going to lie. As soon as I heard he was suspended for PED, that's the first thing I said. That's how he – you know what I mean? Like – but when you hear the story, it's like, yo, it's interesting because um, being alpha male, it's like that's one thing you never talk about. It. Him being an African-American alpha male, like, yo, for him to have to come out and admit to that, I know that probably, like, hurt everything in him. Um, yeah. But it's a conversation that we never have. We never talk about mental health. We never talk about fertility. Shooting in the deadly. Our community. These are things, well, first of all, most of us have a problem with it because most, most NFL players got, like, 11 kids by, like, you know, 12 different women. And I know the math don't work, yeah. but that's my point. Um, so I thought it was interesting how how it could be handled. I don't know because at the end of the day, like, you have to, you know, do a great job of monitoring what goes into your body. I mean, that's how you that's how you put food on your family. So you have to I mean, do a great job. And Clomid is known to be a, a masking agent for PEDs. Yeah. Exactly. That's a great – Jimmy, that's a great point. I, I'm kind of on the fence with this. On one hand, I want to be an altruistic uh, pundit and, and an advocate for for a good, you know, a good, a feel good story. Dude is just trying to, you know, shoot something more than a Dudley up in the club, and I, I can respect that. You know, he's trying to add to his family, but at the same time, a part of your job as a professional athlete is the optimization of your physical nature and body. Like, your job, body, you have to know everything that's going in and everything that's coming out. 
that's you get millions and millions of money to 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 do this. So I'm kind of on the fence as to how sorry I feel for him and what I think should be done. And I don't I don't think he has a right to be mad at the doctor. What the hell does a fertility doctor know about what's on the NFL's banned substance list? And, and, and that's the a great came point, that, because like, I like, you should have done my mom. more research. Like, right. Yo, yo, you need more people, basically. Like, <laughs> it's a serious but, but matter. What I thought of, oh, go ahead, Jim. It's a serious matter, and it probably is one of those things where, because of how he felt about needing the procedure, he didn't want to. He wanted to talk to as, as little people as possible about having to go through it. So. He didn't do enough research or due diligence before, like moving forward with right. it, and end up biting him in the butt. He took a chance, and you know, and I, he got I thought it was ironic because I'm familiar with the drug clomid, and but from what I've known, clomid is something that they give women in fertility to stimulate ovulation. So I was wondering when I first heard the story, I'm like, why would he be taking clomid? But you know, I know a little bit of research on it, and they did say that. Once in a while, they'll give it to men to help with fertility. It didn't really tell me why they would give it to men. But from what I know about Clomid, it's a drug for women to stimulate ovulation. Yeah, it, it works for both. So, you know, so yeah, that you know probably how, um, makes him look a little more suspect as well. Like, you know, this doctor really give this to you? or Yeah, but if you, know, if you look it up, it, it's often given to men. Like, you know how drugs yeah, are. Yeah, no, no. Like, I, def- I, I it, did. I researched it, it, yo, it, and I it read do, that they give it to men thing. sometimes. but. Yo, it do one thing for men and something else for women. Yo, drugs is crazy, man. A, yo, drugs do everything, man. Like one thing you know, <laughs> make a woman, you know, <laughs> make a woman's breast get bigger and it make a man's foot get bigger. Like it just that's how drugs are, man. And like stimulates Lord knows what the after effects are twenty years from now, his, yo. I guess it turns his boys into Michael Phelps. I don't know what's going on. But, yeah, um, get your Michael Phelps. Though. Yeah, I mean, and if he's going through this because he was, you know, too ashamed to go to the teen trainers or teen doctors to say. That he and his wife are having fertility issues. My my answer to that is grow up, man. Come on, seriously. Like, yeah, why is that yeah, but, a problem for for dudes? I don't, because, I don't but really yo, get it, but. and and that's why it's an interesting topic, Dev. Because like you feel it's that way, of, like, but you health, also like you know, said. you also know that's one of them things that we like. Yo, we just don't talk about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's yeah. it's crazy, but it is what it is. So, I and even if happened. he, I mean, he could have he could have gone to the uh, even if it wasn't. Totally the case. He could have gone to the to the people at the within the Colts organization and just blamed it on his wife if he was that ashamed. Like, yeah, man, she can't have no baby. I wanna, I wanna <laughs> give him the Nino John. Like, can't have no baby, man. <laughs> Ain't like I've been trying. <laughs> yeah, you crazy, yo. Yo, it, it's listen, man. You know, once, once you've been to the doctor and you have to admit that you're with a young lady who um who passed something to you, then nothing else at that point makes you embarrassed, man. You know. Yeah, so that's I what I'm saying. That's more. Wait more embarrassing than all this other stuff. Yo, now. Come on, I've heard. Oh, the once you man. go through that, you're like, what do you mean yo. when a fire shoot out you? Like, uh-huh. you can say yo, that. once you get that Q-tip, <laughs> no, I'm be quiet. No, <laughs> oh, oh, all right, man. Oh. Tell everybody who's having a birthday, man. Y'all tripping. <laughs> no doubt. Let's move on, good brother. The birthdays are brought to you by Dr. Monique Roll of Alexandria Podiatry Associates. For the best and comprehensive treatment of injuries to the foot, ankle, and lower extremities, visit Dr. Monique Roll of Alexandria Podiatry Associates. Treating patients in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area and beyond, visit alexandriapodiatry.org or call 703-379-0700. And, uh, you know, if you want the hookup, Master P style, tell them that War Room Sports sent you. Yeah. Now, gentlemen, who's having a birthday? It's okay. My birthday. Uh, the Yay! Fir- First birthday is Novak Djokovic, who turns 27. Man, the great that's Dre like ancient Bly. tennis years. Man. I know. It's definitely <laughs> ancient tennis. The great Dre Bly turns 37. I used to be Randy one of the girl Brown. girl favorites. <laughs> Randy one of Brown your favorites. turns 46. Funny, yeah, don't front on Dre Bly. Now that he's gone, you uh, you pooping on him. Uh, Randy Brown <laughs> turns 46. Randy Brown. Bro. Josh Hamilton <laughs> turns 33. All-star forward slash center Jamal McGlure turns 36. <laughs> Dad, didn't you uh, <laughs> did you have Jamal sign for a minute to your agency? 
or not. <laughs> never, never. And also, I went, up, I went against Williams. him like like we had personal beef from back in the day. Like why? Is Yo, he and, I, and Ricky Williams Only turned thirty seven. Shot at Ricky Williams for us, you know, smoking that loud. But, yo, the Jamal McGlory, for those who don't know, um, we bring him up often in the argument when someone talks about such and such is an all-star. Jamal McGlory is like the go-to person who made the all-star game. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, well, Jamal McGlory was an all-star, so what are you saying? So shout out to Jamal McGlory for um, helping us in our argument. Shout out to McGlory. Those are the Ricky Williams, of course. <clears throat> Ricky Williams is smoking that loud. Anyway. You know he's smoking that loud. Yeah, 100 Yo. Is. I think B. Austin just went underwater or something because uh, Yo, I don't you know, know what that was. <laughs> yeah, B. Austin went underwater like. in the middle of the show. But um, Ricky Williams, <laughs> like you said, Dev, you know, right now he is somewhere celebrating something fierce, smoking that um, <laughs> you know, that Dookie. <laughs> Scoop me, blowing Dookie, I'm I'm blowing Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they don't get the they, they don't them. get the references, man. Ever. Yo, they definitely they don't, don't get, get the Nas and Scarface song, man. Don't even matter though. <laughs> Tell everybody how they get in touch with us though. Uh, she can't no babies, man. Um, y'all can check us out at warroomsports.com. <laughs> While you're there, sign up for the War Report. That's our weekly newsletter. Click on the Contact Us tab. Send us a message about the company to show and inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities. For general inquiries, email us, info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click on the memorabilia tab to buy Warroom Sports merchandise. Click the blog tab to read our latest sports articles. And then click the respective icons to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our iTunes podcast, to watch our videos at WarroomSportsTV.com, and listen to our network at WRSPN.com, and to download our free War Room Sports mobile app to get everything I just mentioned on the go. Join the JW Philly uh, Realty chat room right now during the show at BlogTalkRadio.com slash The War Room to enter the chat room. Just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio if you don't already have one. If you don't want one, you can sign in through your Facebook and Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, click follow. That will get you updates and reminders about the show every week. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. So to call in and speak with us, dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you would like to talk. But right now. Yeah, real quick, Dev. Real mm-hmm. quick, at Casey Mack, uh, Leroy McConnell's in our chat room. He says, uh, it's also Tommy John's birthday. And he says, uh, imagine that uh, this guy is now just, you know, famous for his surgery, not really his, his birthday pitching. make my elbow hurt. <laughs> make my arm <laughs> hurt. Yeah, but, you know, people forget that he was an actual person, like the Tommy John surgery. Like, you know, that came from literally a pitcher named Tommy John. So I know. Once you name Tommy something, John, man. He was, he's like a myth. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's move on, good brother. Let's talk about your All right, topics. man. Well, let's get into some of these hot topics. But before we do, Jimmy, tell everybody whose hot topics are brought to them by. These hot topics are brought to you by Audible. If your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want, try audiobooks and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial at audibletrial.com slash Sports. In no time, you could be listening to the latest bestsellers hands-free and stress-free while getting other things done. I did start that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard biography, um, but there's a lot of great biographies. Actually, a new one just popped up this week. I don't know if I'm going to listen to it yet, but uh, Michael Jordan biography. So it's a new Michael Uh-oh. Jordan biography out there. You can, actually get that, you can actually get that for free. Just go to all you Michael Jordan sick of fans. Just go to audibletrial.com slash sports and get your free <laughs> Michael Jordan biography. What's it called? Anyway, Sweatshop? let's move on, though. Yo! <laughs> yeah. Or it's called, it's, called, it's called Republican wears shoes, too. Or Republican <laughs> Yo. Too. All right. So, Let's um, move on, though. Uh, what's popping? <laughs> all right. So uh, in about 20, 25 minutes, we're expecting our guest, uh, Coach Ed Dunn from Martin Luther King High School in Philly. I don't know if you guys saw the documentary, We Could Be King. It was uh, aired on ESPN2 a few times a couple of weeks ago. Um, Dick Sports is, Sporting Goods is the producer. It's a very good documentary. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But check out our conversation with Coach Dunn coming up in about 20 minutes. Hot topics. Man, got something that we want to talk about. Kevin Johnson. We all know, you know, he's the mayor of Sacramento now, and he was a uh, – He's been, like, out on the forefront of this whole Donald Sterling thing, immediately trying to get him removed when the comments came out. You know, he stepped out and made some really strong statements. 
But now that he's at the forefront of that, some things about his past that he probably thought he paid, you know, for them to go away, starting to come out. Um, Now, there are some reports of Kevin Johnson when he was – he was the the head of St. Hope. That's like a charter school – not not just a charter school, but you know, like like kind of like Mastery in Philly. It's like a whole charter school organization that he founded in Sacramento. Um, they were saying he misused federal funds, and the biggest part about this was that he was accused of sexual misconduct and molestation of a teenage girl, and he reportedly paid two hundred and thirty thousand dollars to resolve these claims brought on by these teenagers. Um, Ironically, this same teenager tried to set him up on the telephone, kind of like Stiviano did to Donald Sterling. She was trying to get Kevin Johnson to openly say the kind of stuff that they were doing. Um, he said a little bit of stuff, but he didn't bite enough for pers- you know prosecutors to he actually didn't fall bring. for the banana in the tailpipe. Yeah, he, he basically didn't fall for the banana in the tailpipe enough for to prosecutors Foley. to have a good case against him. But what do you guys think about Kevin? Johnson, you know, kind of leading the charge against Donald Sterling, but having things, in my opinion, you know, child molestation is probably a little worse than, than you know, racism. Yeah, it depends I mean, on how well, far you take your racism. I mean, if this is back in like the Emmett Till days, then that's different. But yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, here's the thing, right? Um, is he a hypocrite, or first, is he just repented? And well, he, first, first off, like, shout out to Axel Foley, who's the single greatest character in the history of movies, and that's my personal opinion. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> talking about this this matter here is, like, you have to understand, right, if you're going after Donald Sterling and you have things in your closet, you got to chill because you know this guy is very litigious and he will get information. He also has exactly. resources. so He probably gave you know, this to Deadspin. He probably gave this to This is why. This is why Charles Barkley is is one of the greatest athletes of the last uh, last century because he pretty much puts his life out there and acts a fool. So it's really nothing you can do to him. But <laughs> when you try to act holier than thou, you can't attack people like that because it's going to come out. Right. Um, so you're now, saying Charles is like uh, B Rabbit in in, in eight Yeah, pretty much. It, it's sort of yeah. like B Rabbit, yo. Like if I tell you all what this you about, me, about what me, what are you really going to do? Yeah, what yeah. are you really going to do? Like you know. And it's funny because Shaq is sort of that way, too. Shaq's such a clown, and when he does something, it's like, oh, that's just Shaq being Shaq. But KJ has held himself yeah. up to be, you know, a, a guy with a high moral compass, um, you know, a, a man of the community, a man of the people. And, you know, it, it's crazy, but you had to know anybody else who's involved in this going out the store and, yo, your dirt will come up. Your yeah. dirt will come I, up. Yeah, it's, it's the type of thing, like you said, if you have some dirt, all right, kindly remove yourself from the proceedings now because this dude is going to shat on you <laughs> in a minute. Because he like, he like, he's man, he like, this is bigger than Donald Sterling. If I'm going down, I'm taking a whole lot of folks with me. Y'all don't get out right. Yo, man, he got yeah. two, <laughs> he's got two billion. He's got two billion dollars to play around with to make life miserable for everybody in his line of sight. Um, I think KJ. I think KJ should have thought about this a little bit more before he died, decided to throw his hat in the ring, especially if he knew that he was going to be uh, accused or, or had some issues with playing with young booty. Um, I, think he <laughs> I, he I don't think he knew, though, B. Austin. He paid 230 grand to get this, you know, to get this gone, <laughs> to get disappeared. Yeah. So, you know, he but he don't but realize you know, 230. Billion, like you man. said, dude has $2 billion yeah. to throw around. So 230 really not going to keep anything under wraps when he's involved. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, go ahead, B. All I want to say is this, man. Like, it, it's it's definitely crazy, right? Um, but you have to be prepared for this when, you you know, you're taking a man like that with that much money and that much power and influence on the court. And for the people out there listening, I just want you to know on the record that I am a scumbag that in the past has lied to women and told them anything they wanted to hear. <laughs> To get what I wanted, so you can't. I'm, I'm blackmailable. You can't blackmail me, yo. So I just want to put that on the record, yo. I am a scumbag, yeah. and um, you know, sorry to all the women, you know, no, I kill. Yo, but anyway, let's I go. I went to, uh, I went to an Uncle Luke party, and if you see the video, I did do it, and it was me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I went man, to Lincoln so... University. Never mind, I'm a chill. 
Good, good luck to KJ with that. Everybody know KJ is, um, you know, he he was yo. who I patterned my game after. Yo, that's one of up. Dad's favorite players. I said Dad yo. a text like, yo, that's your man. <laughs> Remember when, when Jimmy and I played uh, high school basketball? Like we were, we were a Nike team, but you know that's what we had to wear. But in practice, I wore my Converse. I wore my KJs in practice. So, but but <laughs> I don't I don't condone. Happened, like, yo, this is your man. This your man. I don't, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't condone sexual misconduct with the young girls. So um, all this, yeah, all this time, KJ, your man on, KJ was hitting him, hitting hitting him with the pedo the pedo crossover. The pedo bed. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, uh, your man Shady, <laughs> Lashawn McCoy, says to who was he talking to? Uh, first take. He said that he is the best running back in the NFL, and that includes your man Adrian Peterson. Um, his comments were basically he says my um when they asked him, you know, of course they asked him. He didn't just come out talking like this. That's usually never the case. Um, but a lot of people who decides to attack the the person bringing the message, you know, they usually don't realize that, you know, these people are being asked questions. So he answered it. They right. asked him if he considers himself the, the league's top back. He replied, yes, sir. And then he expanded on why he feels that so. He said, my brother always rips me all the time trying to make me play harder. I say I'm the best. And he'll say, did Adrian Peterson retire? I look at the last three years and everything. I think AP has been the best back for so long, and he's been doing it for so long. That's why he automatically gets the best running back title. But the last three years, I've been all pro, first team twice. I never leave the field. I block, I catch, I never leave the field. He had to repeat that, trying to let all y'all know that Adrian just run. He don't, you know, he don't do all that. <laughs> stuff. I don't have anybody to do my job. I do it myself. Tons of credit goes out to AP after I just dissed him. I'm a big fan of his for sure, but I feel I'm the best. What do you guys think? Adrian Peterson yo, he said, um, or Shady McCoy right part, now as we speak? Yo, Not the, funniest words, part right about that, the funniest part about that is how he kept saying, I don't leave the field. I don't leave the field. I'm like, yo, <laughs> slow it down. I just <laughs> dissed you. Like, he was making, yo, he said the shots to AP on the low, man. Like, but it's arguable. It's definitely arguable. When I think about the best running backs in the league, right, there's certain names that come to mind. Shady, of course, AP. Um, I don't even know if I would consider anybody else, for real, for real. Like, Chris Johnson yo, had his run. Jamal, Jamal Charles is Jamal, fast. Jamal Charles. Jamal fast. Charles. Is, I, would you put him I as have, the best back? Like, I can't. Like, I have three right now. I mean, Jimmy just named them. Um, between LaShawn McCoy, Adrian Peterson, and probably Jamal Charles. Um, Peterson, I mean, not Peterson, McCoy and Charles. See, I would have to cop out of this answer this way and say that McCoy mm-hmm. and Charles are probably better all-around backs because they do more. But Adrian Peterson mm-hmm. is the most dominating, pure runner, you know, in the NFL. No. But McCoy is not right, well, lying question, when he though. says – Adrian, Adrian Peterson doesn't Adrian. do everything because on third down, Adrian Peterson has to roll. He doesn't stay on the field because here's the question. he's here's not going to catch a not, pass. You know, like here's I'm, the question for both of you gentlemen, right? You mm-hmm. you have a, we have a draft the tonight. Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, good brother. Go ahead, do that. No, we having a draft tonight. I like you I like draft tonight. And both and both and both are on the board um, for this season. Mm-hmm. Who are you taking? Adrian Peterson. No, no question. And I'm a big okay, I'm Jeff, a big shady. I'm a big shady fan. Um, draft is tonight. Who are you taking? It's difficult. I mean, draft is tonight, and they're already the the ages that they are, and wear and tear. Yeah. And all that stuff. Watch, De- Watch Dev about to get his uh, his uh, his technicality. No, I'm on. just saying in what, that case, then I would have to running? go with <laughs> I would have to go with Lashawn McCoy, especially if you look at the way you know offenses are going in this league. I think Adrian Peterson is as dominant as he is in Minnesota because he has to be. Their quarterback situation has been trash for the past few years, so he has to carry that team. I think if they have if, – if they if Christian Ponder was what they thought he was when he took McNabb's spot, that's a shot, um, it, would probably, <laughs> it, would, it would be a little bit different. Like they would have a quarterback and they would probably um, covet somebody that's more along the lines of a Jamal Charles and a, and a, and a McCoy. Awesome. I mean, even though you're not going to get rid of Adrian Peterson, but – you know, they would want that extra. Here's the thing. Dev, Dev, Dev said he has three guys. Like, I, I guess I'm a little bit different because I don't have Jamal Charles this there yet. I have him, like, on the outside yeah. looking in at uh, yeah. Shady. So I'm, I'm no, asking you, where I'm, do you have Jamal no, Charles? I'm, I'm, 
I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Jamal Charles, I appreciate what he does, but it's a tad bit disrespectful to mention him in the conversation with these two gentlemen in my estimation. It's a tad bit Yo, disrespectful. Okay, I think that those two Aaron are by Foster? themselves. And, and, mm-hmm. I, I saw some people bring up Aaron Foster, and it's like, yes, I think he was on his way, but he can't stay on the he field. Can't like, he can't stay on the field. Stay. You know, um, Aaron Foster, you know, like, Marshall, you're not up Marshall, there. Marshall, Marshall, Marshawn Lynch and Alfred Morris, where do they fall? Haven't done it long enough, probably. Huh? They don't fall. Alfred, Alfred Morris? Did you just bring Alfred Morris? <laughs> I know you like yeah. dude, and I know we all have a, a, a respect for him that we don't think Washington fans Yo. have enough of, but you're drawing right now. <laughs> Yo, Alfred I'm Morris doesn't even have a uh, – his, 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 his second, I'm trying, I mean, his second he, season was tough. He's the best player. He's the best player on that team, though, like. Yeah, but he's, his, I mean, he's, a, was, he's a good, he's a, he's a very good pure runner as well. But you know, he doesn't, he I'm also doesn't fall into that all around. Yo, but I the think the only person dominant enough, the only person dominant enough to be the best back in the league without having all around skills is Adrian Peterson because he's just that good. Right. I, I'll he's give that you that. Good. But here's the thing: uh, though, Alpha Morris, Alpha Morris last year had a suspect. See, he started losing carries to some boy at the end of the season. I can't think of dude's name, and I noticed. Mm-hmm. Roy Hulu. Whatever his name is, do start taking a bunch yeah. of his carries because well, they probably knew that they were trash and weren't making the playoffs. So well, I heard they're yeah, they were trying to save them. Well, no, it yeah. wasn't just that, yo. Sometimes dude actually got because he had better spacing. Also, they didn't like, crowd the line, but yo, dude was very productive when he started taking his carries because I would know that just well, from fantasy. Because yeah. I had Alfred Morris, I cut the I cut the TV on like, all right, we at the goal line, and he's nowhere to be found. I cut the TV on if you're talking that, goal line, the they that's started the they started giving the ball to uh to their fullback on the goal line. Remember he had a three touchdown game. And that, and that yeah, is crazy. Like, not you bad have either. a bruiser in either. the game at all the time. And, you know, so why are you taking him out at the goal line? Let that man they, they, you know, they, reap they, some they of the benefits. Back they full back isn't bad, but back to the question, I think Adrian Peterson, I, I just, I've seen it for far too long, and with what they have in Minnesota, I mean, they line up, opposing teams line up 15, 16, 17 men in the box against him. They bring fans down out of the stands, and he still chugs along and gives you four and a half yards of carry, 20 to 25 carries a game, sometimes 30. I, I I can't go against that dude, man. And and the thing with Shady, I believe that Shady is an all around great back. I believe he's also a great runner. Don't get me wrong, but he benefits now from playing in a system where he will never see an eight or nine man front unless it's it's short yardage situation. So you don't have right, the box because you can't. Here we go. I mean, I, 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 I Ask me, I still I think Adrian Peterson is the best running back in the league. Like I, said, all right, I would have to throw our, on that all-around caveat to put Adrian Peters. I mean, to put uh, in our chat room, McCoy up there. We have a comment in our chat room from Skyview Kevin, um, who's a Raiders fan, who, and they have no good players. But anyway, he says uh, Adrian <laughs> Peterson is the is the better running back, and Shady is yeah. the better football player. That makes oh, sense. God. I mean, he's like he's like me. He's putting, you know, you got to put some caveats on it because. They're so different. I'm not going to say they're different to, you know, we ask a lot of questions on the page and everybody want to use the cliche, oh, it's apples and oranges. Like, since when can't you compare apples and oranges? If my wife said you want yeah. some fruit, you want this apple or you want this orange, I'm going to compare them damn things to see which one I want to eat. So, like, not, not, yeah, not, not, only, not only that, not only that, not only that, Devin, they play the same position. Yeah, it all depends upon like, whether, because like it all depends upon whether it's like a golden delicious John, because like apples have you know. Yeah, upon exactly. Apples it's like, uh, man, you, man, you know, is it a golden like, delicious kind of versus, versus a golden delicious versus apple? a tangerine now, or is it a tangerine? <laughs> <laughs> like it depends, like, you know what I mean? So, no, nah, I, I agree with like he's definitely the best pure running back in the league, and if. You know, if I want my running game to shine old school, then I'm going with Adrian Peterson. Yo, he runs. Yo, he runs over linebackers and runs away from defensive backs. Because as a how game, fighting is that style, as, how as long McCoy can that style is, last though? McCoy dances sometimes when he doesn't need to dance, and that that gets frustrating yeah. at times. 
How he, how you know. long can can AP style last though? Like uh, realistically, like he's been taking a beating lately. And how long can the it last? Funny, and we we do I think know it's he's ironic that he's lasted this long because when he came into the league, he was you know he was injury prone in college, so it took him this Boy. long to get his first major injury, and then he came off of that and you know shot his leg up with whatever he shot it up with. And, and it had you know, two grand. He went, to, he went to see a German. He went to, first of all, I really don't think, I don't think. Nah, he went to see Victor Conti. Huh? Yeah. yeah that's Yo. True. I don't think Adrian Peterson is human. I think that, and this is just my views, this is not the views of anybody else on, on this show or associated with the company. But wherever black people came from, whatever planet, yo, know, they found Adrian Peterson and brought him here. Because you can't. You can't I, I, I figured it out, like though. That. Like, I, I, I started calling Adrian Peterson Caesar after 2011 when I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes because I figured it out. I think that Adrian Peterson was taking that ALZ-112. And for those who don't know what Yo. ALZ-112 is, Google it because he had to have been taking that because, like, no, <laughs> Yo. 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 no, Yo. there's no Yo. way to care, describe How do you tear your ACL and come back better? <laughs> Yo, man, in the, in, the, in, the word, in the words of the great son no of God. No human being can do that. <laughs> Wait, you you said come back better. He came back almost the best of all time. Like, he was, he was nine <laughs> yards short from the rushing record. <laughs> he didn't and, come and, back and better. He still came back as a point, legend. To your point, to your point all right, here's the funny thing. thing um, a couple, couple points about, from the chat room. With AP, um, is he runs high, so he takes a lot more hits than most people. He doesn't run low behind his pads. He runs up he don't high. Try to, he doesn't try to avoid him either. All right, from our chat room, right, Leroy, Leroy McConnell also said it was seven months that he did all that, so it wasn't even a whole season. Um, Also, Leroy also said AP is on steroids. Um, Skyview Kevin says if Darren – Sky, Sky, Kevin says if Darren McFadden could stay healthy, he would be in the conversation. F O H. Um And Leroy McConnell. Leroy McConnell. Yo, yo, seriously, for the for the six plays he plays per season, he is a do it all. No, <laughs> he, no, 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 he's not. Yeah, he's a, he, he's no, a do it all for that team for the six plays that he plays in. Yo, season. no, he's good. He's very good. But like you said, he, he plays somewhere between six. And eight plays a season, so I know, but you got to use statistics. If you, I'm gonna use a big word here. If you extrapolate that over 16 games, <laughs> then <laughs> then McFadden, McFadden would be, you know, he would be one yo, of them dudes. If, yo, if you extrapolate yo, that, back up, running, another yo, KC back, back up, back up, that's a central high line. Right go to Oakland. They go to Oakland because they know that they're gonna end up a starter. Every back up, yo, another, back another, plant, another oh. KC Mac quote, man. And he said that Jamal Charles. <laughs> Is just as good as Shady, but uh, Casey Mack, you should let everybody know that you are a Chiefs fan. So um, I think you're a Chiefs yeah, fan. Chiefs or Cowboys, one of the two. But, but, yeah, all right. Yo, we got a Chiefs fan and a Raiders fan in here touting their own running backs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I guess, I guess they're that. saying the same we, thing about we, me, but I still said Adrian Peterson was better than. than and we Eagles, Eagles fans are what you're looking fan, for. Fan Yo, yeah, I'm a Broncos fan. We don't even have a running back, and we better than the Chiefs and Raiders, and we don't even we don't even play with running backs. Monty Ball. Run the ball. <laughs> yeah, Monty Ball's a great point guard. I mean, the the crying dude had a good season, man. The crying dude had yo, a good he, season. Yo, he, yo, honestly, he overachieved on his life because he's not, he's not as good as he but was last know, season. But you guys know, you know, he's really like him. the, he's the verb now for for crying. Like somebody said that to me the uh, other day, saying like, you know. Cause, you know, a friend of ours no passed time. last week, and somebody told me I couldn't go to the funeral, man, because I was going to be on my um my no shine, like <laughs> I was going to be no shining. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's his that's his rep now. All right, so real quick, you know, before we get our guests on in a few minutes, man, let's talk about the um the latest lawsuit from former players to the NFL. Um, now this one isn't about performance enhancing. Uh, I'm sorry, this isn't about concussions. This one is actually about painkillers. It's along the same lines because they're saying that the league illegally, because the league was so thirsty for profits, the league illegally supplied them with um, painkillers without prescriptions just to uh, get them back on the field in, You know, when they had injuries, sometimes serious injuries, they claim. Um, the lawsuit names eight players. Some of the notable ones are some uh, – 
some former um, Chicago Bears from the 85 team, Richard Dent, Jim McMahon, um, a couple of linemen. So what do you guys think about this? I mean, because we talked about the whole concussion lawsuit ad nauseum. So now, you know, there's something else coming. They're saying we didn't know uh, this, and a lot of us left the league addicted to painkillers because of it. Is this another situation where these guys knew what they were doing, but now that they see the the, the league as a multi-billion-dollar entity, everybody wants a piece of the pie no matter how now? Can, Is that one of these? Can, can, can I say something fundamentally, just, just a real basic fundamental point that I think needs to be considered here? Uh, do I think the NFL is absolutely evil? Of course it is. Of course it is. Free market economy. Shout out to Jimmy. But when your body is in pain, that's your body giving you a message. Like, that you have to listen. Like, if I put my hand yeah. on the stove and it and it's on and it's red and, it, and it's out, you start and I feel that pain. <laughs> yeah, like, I got to take my hand off. So when I feel my ankle or my shoulder, or my hamstring, or my groin, like it hurts, and it hurts really, really bad. Like I can't really perform the way that I want to perform without shooting cortisone into my body, then I should have listened. I should have listened heal. to my body. It just mask. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's my fundamental thought. So this is a, a quote-unquote, right. shout-out to Rob Parker, money grab for these for these people uh, who've talked to so far? I, I I think it's a money grab. I think that they're pointing to the fact that the NFL and all big business that exploits athletes is generally evil. And so they're capitalizing on the fact that now it's known and it's out there. These guys are evil. The NFL is evil. They don't care about us. We're just neat. But it, it's always been that. It's always been that. So now what? I, I don't – It'll yeah, probably end up being something that they're going to have to settle on again. Um, like I said, right now it only names eight players, um, but the lawyers are basically seeking class action status. So it might be up to 500 former players, you know, to eventually sign on to the lawsuit. Um, first of all, if I'm those eight players, I don't want to let anybody else on it. Because they're going to end up with six dollars and forty nine cents, like they all ended up with, <laughs> with the last, first loss. <laughs> <laughs> yo, sh- yo, yo shout out to everybody that money I've been a part of, yo. What'd you say? Because uh, y'all know y'all get them little postcards in the mail. I, I always send them in because you know I be looking for more forward than my four dollars and twenty four cent. Oh no, I, I, I mean, man, I had a I had a big settlement recently. I got like eleven dollars and forty cents from Bank of America. Yo, I. Yo, I got one from uh, I think it was Wells Fargo. I got one from that. John was like twenty eight dollars, and it was I was shocked. Okay. I was like, yo, yeah, it was kind of crazy, man. Ever. I got one for Sally Mae. Yeah, Sally <laughs> Mae was like, you know, disturbing the peace, calling people and saying all kinds of craziness. I got one for them for like, you know what I mean, six dollars. Yeah, I don't but, want one from them. Yo, I just want yo. loan forgiveness from them. I just want loan. Yo, you guys, Sally, you guys, I'm good. you guys, you guys have uh, both had a lot more success with your class action suits. The two that I've been a party to, one, I total, two, if I combine them, I don't have to talk about them individually. If I combine them, they total up to 76 cents. Damn. <laughs> but it, no, it's crazy, though, because, like, people get those postcards all the time, but I'm like, yo, they don't give me nothing. Who cares? Like, I had, yo, I had something that's been, like, what crazy, 40 cents. Yeah, I don't know who they sued, Joe. Like, they sued Mr. Mon or something. Like, I don't know who he sued to get 76 cents, but... Um, it's crazy, man. Like people are going to sign on to this lawsuit. Um, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with football, man. But when you start seeing these lawsuits, and, and, and the thing is, it's not just the NFL. Um, if you read the news and read what's going on, there are a lot of lawsuits against like school districts. There's, there's a lot of lawsuits against uh, colleges, individual suits. But it just makes me, you know, nervous for the, the future of football in this country. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. It's one of those things, excuse me, where you think, like, these dudes were grown men, you know what I'm saying? They knew that, okay, what they're giving me is going to numb the pain so I can go out and play today. I hear people talk about it all the time, and I actually heard all three Golic brothers talking about this the other day on Mike and Mike, and, and, you know, they were basically calling the foul for money grab because they said everything they did back then they knew they were doing, even with the concussions. 
They said, you know, they knew that they had concussions and it was on them because they wanted to get back on the field or, or whatever. I think that's why the language in this one, you know, it gets a little dicey because, of course, they were grown men and knew what they were doing, but what they're trying to accuse the league of is illegally supplying them with quote-unquote risky narcotics and other painkillers. So they know in proceedings that the language is going to come up, okay, you guys knew that, you know, you had some pain and you wanted to mask it just to keep you on the field. So they're going to in turn say, well, these guys were getting these drugs without prescriptions and they were just giving it out to Uh, us. So that's where they're going to make their money. But, yeah, it's, it's... it's, it's it's one of those. Things, it's man, a move. You... It's a it's a it's a it's a move where the semantics actually mean something in this case because you throw that illegal in it. It's oh, it's not that we didn't know that we was effing up and doing something stupid. It's not that we didn't know we were ignoring, but they illegally gave it to us versus prescribing. Like, okay, now you're playing technicality against the monster for a money grab, and I, I think from a settlement standpoint. Uh, I don't know what the, the NFL is equipped to deal with stuff like this, but they have a hundred million lying around somewhere. That ain't nothing to them. So <laughs> they take care of it. Yeah, so so Jimmy, you, know, you just, got a, just got a hundred million lying around somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Jim, you want to go to the digital yeah. real quick before? Um, Absolutely. Before Let's bring on the homie Savad, who's on the Digital Extreme Technologies Hotline. Shout What's out up, to good Tissue and the you? Tape. If you're a hip hop hey, I'm, I'm great. Make sure you check out Tissue and the Tape. What's up, Savant? Tissue hey. in the hey. tape. <laughs> hey guys, uh, just, uh, just, just, I just, I rarely have the opportunity to, to listen to the show live. I normally listen to it um, on the archive tip, but um, I really oh, man, just appreciate the conversation. And uh, you know, um, I just wanted to chime in real quick. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I, uh, Jamal Charles, me being a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I have a great Yo, deal of respect for him. Yo, hey, when I saw your name on the, the board, objective. I was kind of thinking that's why you were calling in. But go ahead, say what you're going to say. Well, well, I mean, I mean, the objective. it is basketball season. I know, Dev, I know you're a Sixers fan. Um, so, you know, I, 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 miss, I miss the lottery talk. Y'all done it already? Um, no, we get there, yeah. We're going to get there. <laughs> okay. Well, me, me, me being a Spurs fan, I, I, I'll leave you guys with, you know, that, that off-season talk. I know it's off-season time already. <laughs> 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 Yo, we we are trying to be champions of the all season while y'all trying to be champions of the re- of the real season. So what? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I thought that's what it was about, you know. Yeah. Hey, Savon, let me ask you a question though. Being a Spurs fan, sure. right? Um, sure, sure. Yo, and and the way Game Six uh, ended your season, well, not really ended. You ended in Game Seven, but the way Game Six went down, like, yo, are you still mad though? Mm-hmm. I, I haven't gotten a good night's sleep since that day. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't slept. Is it, and Savannah, so Savannah, this is this is B. I got a question as well. Is it better sure. to just get your your doors blown off from the jump, or do you want to go all the way to the end and just have it that close, and then have LeBron rip it from your grasp? Your grasp. Like, what, I, I would rather get. Mean? I'd rather get that close just because. I mean, that's uh, what fuels the uh, team. So. I mean, if you look at the loss to the Grizzlies um, in eleven. Okay you know, uh, one versus eight, and then they said, all right, we're not doing that the next year. They made it to the conference finals and lost in the conference finals. said, okay, we're not doing that. So each year you can see the team using that to kind of fuel got it. Got you, got you. Cool to be the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Got you. Well, well, no, well, well, the difference between that is the Spurs have four championships and the Bills have got four you. conference championships. <laughs> There's a big difference. have four L's. No, nah, I mean, yeah. and, and, and be over there being funny. He probably was as big a Spurs fan as you were when it was going down because he's a Heat hater. Okay, and um, you know, okay. myself, I'm, I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of Super Team and myself. So I really I hate, didn't want what they did to yeah. work, and it keeps working. So well, I, I think I need it's y'all to coming, step it's, it's it up. It's backfiring on them. It's backfiring on them. Um, you can see the Battiers and the James Joneses and the. All the people that they kind of brought in to hit shots, they still have to play defense, so they still have to do some other things. So maybe it won't work out this year. Yeah, but it's going to be like after after at least two championships and maybe four finals appearance, I don't know if I can call it a backfiring. I mean, but but you can go back to LeBron's comments, not six, not seven, not eight, and then say, okay. If it ends at two. They're going to retool their team. They're going to retool their team. Um. I'm just wondering what's going to happen with you guys. I mean, there's only so many more runs you can go on. When Timmy when Timmy calls it quits, 
I want to see what happens to you guys. Like, because, you know, let's well, I mean, it being like the Spurs are, uh, you know, they knew, y'all knew money. So let's, let's you know. It's not like going to be straight dominating no more anyway. Them, the Spurs well, yeah, I mean, yeah. just with that, the front office that, that San Antonio has, I mean, R.C. Buford just finally got executive over here. I don't hold a lot of weight in that, but, I mean, he's been doing, you know, a phenomenal job there for a decade plus just with kind of retooling the team. And not paying the luxury tax while still having your Rasha Nasterovich and you know guys <laughs> like him. Um, but how know, long still, is Pop going to stay around? How long is Pop going to stay around? Once Tim, I think they're like tied. Like once Timmy leaves, Pop leaves, and you know, cause they, 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 they're staying for two more years. Tim isn't playing past age forty, and he just turned okay, thirty-eight. So Tim, gotcha. uh, he has a player option this year. I think he'll sign on for a farewell year. And then that'll basically be it. So that's why it's imperative to get the next big win. Yo, I need uh, y'all. I need y'all to beat the Heat because basically you're going to give OKC a thrashing. Uh, they don't look yeah. like they belong. Um, so I need this year. Y'all can't fail me, man. Y'all, I, I need. I, don't sell me out, Manu. Manu, don't sell me be, out, man. Be, be awesome. I'm glad you said that because that led me into. And I, I mentioned Jamal Charles. My real question I wanted to ask you, brothers, is. Mm-hmm. I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but I read an article uh, talking about the Brian Westbrook kind of um, – I'm, I'm sorry, the Russell Westbrook, um, mm-hmm. his, you know, dynamic with KD. Uh, if you had to rate him in terms of where he stands um, in the league, now, like where we mm-hmm. are right now, is he top seven, top five, top ten? Uh, I want to get your definitely, opinions on that. Definitely, Pretty great, huh? definitely, a, top, definitely a top ten. And, and you won't find the typical cliché banter – that you'll find around the sports world here. We are not, um, we don't, we don't, we don't put uh, Russell Westbrook over the coals, rake him over the coals. I think he's very talented. I think that without Russell Westbrook, that team is not as successful as it is. He's an integral part of what they do. There's certainly things that he can work on in his game. There's things he can do better, but they're better for having him. They're better with him as opposed to without him, and yeah, I think that he's, he's a top he's, ten player with the potential. He's just not a point yeah. guard, and that's all. So so, right. so right. I right. think for Russell Westbrook's shortcomings, I think at this point you blame Scott Brooks. Put him in his right position, right. Okay. and then you don't have to worry about everybody talking about, you know, and oh, Russell's I not kinda, passing and this and that. Like, do it at the I kind of co-sign, co-sign what B. Austin said because, you know, we spend our time on the Internet. So we see all the slander that goes the way of uh, Westbrook in – you know, a lot of it's warranted, but a lot of it's unwarranted. I mean, the guy is definitely one of the top players in the league. He he makes that team go. They are not the right. same team without him. Um, without him, they wouldn't be where they are. He's kind of the heart and soul of the team. As, as great as a player as KD is, he's the fearless one. He's the alpha male on that team. And, you know, the, a lot of the other players benefit from him being there. He pushes the tempo. He controls the tempo of the game. That's not Durant. Absolutely. As great as a player he is, so you know I, I see all the all the hate he gets, and it's kind of like he's the easy guy to bash on right now because it's sort of like KD can do no wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like KD can do no wrong, so he'll, he'll get away with it because he's had a terrible game yesterday as well. Like let's let's keep it real. Like he had a terrible game too, but everything goes on Westbrook. It's, it's easy to bash him right now. So, but no, in the long but... term, if they were to get rid of him, they'd be in trouble. The shots, uh, the thing. shots that Westbrook gets slandered for, Damn. KD takes them as well, and uh, nobody says anything. Like, well, no one says hey, anything I, about the dumb shit. Someone also pointed out how how long, um, for as much as KD did the whole you the real MVP thing, like he spent a, a lot of time <laughs> speaking speaking to his pop. <laughs> I call him his he's his pop in my eyes. Um, he said he grew up with a father. <laughs> He said he didn't grow up with a father, and then when he, when you know, when um, OKC or when the Sonics uh, drafted um, Russell Westbrook, he finally had the, the dad he never had. So, um, <laughs> damn. Hey, you know, man, thanks for your call. Though we're gonna we're gonna get back into this, but we got our guests waiting on the line, so we're gonna get them no, on real I mean, quick. Hey guys, and um, doing your thing, after that, we're team. gonna go back into basketball. <laughs> hey, thanks, man, you guys are the Take it easy, homie. Thing. All right, man. All right, now. All right, Already. you too, man. <laughs> no doubt. That's the homie survived from uh, Tissue in the Tape Hip Hop Podcast. That's also on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. So make sure you check those guys out if you are indeed a hip hop head because 
that's what they do. <laughs> they go in every episode, and uh, it's just good stuff. All right, so we talked to you guys earlier um, about the We Could Be King documentary, of course, produced by Dick Sporting Goods. It aired a few times um, a few weeks ago on ESPN2. Um, and it was basically about uh, scholastic sports in America, um, but the backdrop was our hometown of Philadelphia because of the budget cuts. Uh, a lot of schools had to close. Um, athletic programs were on the chopping block as well. And uh, the documentary, it basically followed the merger of two rival schools in our hometown, Germantown High School and Martin Luther King High School. Um, and our guest was featured on it. He's the head coach of Martin Luther King uh, high school football team, and he's going to come on with us and discuss the importance and the necessity of youth and scholastic sports in America and talk a little bit about, you know, what went down in Philadelphia in, in his district and what's going down nationally um, and what Dick Sport, Sporting Goods is doing about it. So uh, without further ado, we bring on Coach Ed Dunn from Martin Luther King High School in Philly for the first time. What's up, Coach? You're in the war room. Hey, good evening, guys. Good evening. Up, Thanks for having me. All right. Absolutely. How are you? How are you? How are you? Doing, brother? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good, man. I appreciate you guys inviting me out. Oh, man, we we appreciate you coming on, man. We saw that documentary a few weeks ago. First of all, you know, because we're, we're all from Philly, and, and we established mm-hmm. with you when we talked to you off air that we all actually went to the same high school, uh, Central yeah, High yeah. School. Uh, 254 here, shout out to 263, that's Coach Dunn's class. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, when, we, when we saw the documentary, you know what I'm saying, of course, uh, you and your relationship with the with the players and the athletes and, and the students at the school as well, that just stood out to you. So, you know, we went, we immediately went looking for you, you know, called into some of our, our guys that we know are in the high school football pipeline in Philly and got a hold of you. So we thank you for coming on, you know, you know, giving thank us a you. few minutes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very nice. All right, so let's let's get right into it. Um due to now I'm explain a little bit of this to more of this to our audience, but due to the budget shortfall, which was around three hundred million dollars, um twenty four Philly public schools closed in twenty thirteen. Um this caused some schools to merge and, and the most notable we think was the closure of Germantown High School, which had been a Northwest Philly staple for 99 years. Now, Germantown students ended up at their arch rival, Martin Luther King, as I explained earlier, which was the backdrop of the documentary, We Could Be King. Mm-hmm. Coach, considering that you taught at Germantown and, you know, and coached at Germantown, how difficult was that initial period of merging students and student athletes from these two rival communities? Uh, it was definitely a, a challenging situation, especially considering uh, the budget crisis and, and, the, and there was so much buzz around the city that you know these two schools could never merge; they could not, it could never work together. Uh, but my primary concern was with with the young men and women at the school, uh, in, in particular the, the football players that I had grown a relationship with, uh, because they're in such a delicate point in their life. You know, a lot of them are going into their senior year. Um, right. Some of them were getting recruited and had all you know scholarship opportunities and things like that that they needed to take advantage of, uh, and, and it was just you know a transition that they would have to go through, which was a relatively major one. In addition to the fact that you know they're all going into a new environment, and I'm going into a new environment and, and building relationships with kids that I hadn't known before. Uh, so it, it was one that was uh, definitely uh, a challenge. But the great thing is is that. Ultimately, what happened was that the the school communities, the two communities of the school, the students there, uh, the teachers, you know, even the coaches on my staff, especially the coaches on my staff, we all kind of bonded together, and and we had a foxhole mentality of, all right, you know, the world's against us, but we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this work. And instead of fighting this change and getting upset about things that we don't have any control over, let's, let's worry about the things we do have control over. So what we tried to do uh, right out the gate was, you know, start integrating the schools. The ironic part was the first time that the players from Martin Luther King and Germantown actually met each other was in an interest meeting that we had at Martin Luther King in May. You know, and the right. first day of school wasn't until September. So we wanted to be ahead of the curve. So we got the kids right. together in May, started having those guys do weight training together, uh, off-season training and stuff like that, 
camps, the whole nine. So by the time the first day of school rolled around, these guys had already had relationships. Uh, the kids that were coming over from Germantown got an opportunity to be in the building and see what it was like, meet some teachers, get some exposure so that it wasn't as much a culture shock for those guys. And so what ended up happening was we allowed for the football team to kind of be the role models for everybody else to, hey, this is not the end of the world. Uh, this can work. You know, at the end of this day, we're all in the same community. We all want the same thing, whether it's to be successful on the football field or be successful in the classroom. We all here for the same thing. Yeah, okay. and, and I think that's a, a a great story, especially a great point because um, I know the media kept trying to point out, and I, and I heard them point it out at least once in the documentary about you know the violence surrounding you know those two schools and their rivalries and, and things like that. So you know I, I'm sure things weren't a hundred percent smooth, but it sounds like the the initial um, merging of these two communities, it, it probably wasn't as bad as people thought it was going to be, especially from, you know, what the media was putting out there prior to it. So that, that's yeah, de- de- yeah, definitely. It, w- it wasn't, you know, like the media sometimes sensationalizes the story, and people really right. did have legit concerns. I don't want to understate uh, that, that people were concerned, and there was a lot of concern that by – Forcing these two schools to, to merge, you would force, you know, force two neighborhoods, you know, to combine, and there could be some, some violence and things like that in both schools, by virtue of them being, you know, neighborhood, big neighborhood, comprehensive high schools that pretty much we, we take every single kid in the city, we don't turn anybody away. That right. you know, some people had concerns that there would be some violence as a result of the merger, but like I said, we didn't have any control over what people were saying. All we had to, had control over was. What well, we did, so we spent a lot of time making sure that these kids spent time uh, getting in to know each other. We did uh, some team building activities where the guys went uh, zip lining and, and did some other types of, you know, non football activities together just to bond and right. build that camaraderie with each other uh, so that, you know, it will be a second thought of them, second thought to them this whole merger thing. And, and as they, you know, got a chance to get to know me, uh, got a chance to get to know each other, I think things. Uh, really, really started to kind of roll, and I think that the possibility of winning and that they all knew that they were a part of a special team that has the potential also had a lot to do with it as well. Yeah, that's that's, that's a great coach. Uh, this is Jimmy, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. And similar uh, to the Wu Tang Clan, War Room Sports, um, we we're all about the children, right? So mm-hmm. one of the things <laughs> we do, um, we've spoken at schools, we you know mentor and do things of that nature, and, and I find it interesting because. I know music has been cut from almost every program I've seen, and due to budget shortfalls in the school districts in Philly, as well as other low-income areas across the nation, sports now seem to be on the chopping block as expendable programs. Now, so when you're talking about you're cutting music and now you're cutting sports, there's really no extra activities for these kids to do, but and there's so much trouble to get into. So all of us, um, having been athletes who were brought up in the inner city, I just wanted to hear your opinion on the importance and necessity of youth and scholastic sports programs. That you know, because there are some things that people may not see when they when they look at the importance of sports. So, from your standpoint, how important are sports in the high schools? Well, I, I, like you said, uh, whether it be sports or whether it be music, uh, a lot of times it's the extracurricular activities that kind of get kids even more engaged in the educational process, and, uh, and to a large extent, with sports is, is what their motivation to do well in class is because they want to have the opportunity to participate in sports and they know that they have to get it done in the classroom in order to do that. Now let me talk a little bit about kind of the backdrop of all this that you you, you mentioned. Uh, obviously the school district was going through a budget shortfall, which caused the merger of these schools and all these schools to be shut down. Uh, several teachers were laid off. I was one of those teachers that, that was laid off. In addition to that, uh, they had in their original what we call the doomsday budget, there was no money budgeted for sports. So in addition to the merger, in addition to me being laid off, in addition to all these other obstacles, we were practicing throughout the summer, and we just didn't know if there was going to be football in the fall. And so wow. luckily at the last minute they were they were able to find some money for sports. But big picture-wise, uh, across the nation, an estimated $3.5 billion was cut from school sports budgets during the 2009 to 2011 school years, just to kind of give you some perspective. And another study predicts that by 2020, 27% of U.S. public schools will not offer intellectual sports programs at all. So one-fourth wow. of schools in the wow. country will not have sports. Uh, and, and so it's definitely something that is incredibly uh, kind of endangered 
right now. And what a lot of programs are moving to is actually charging the kids to play sports, even in high school. And for kids, like, in our neighborhood and where we come from, that that is going to have a direct implication on how many kids actually participate in sports. Uh, right. Actually, as of right now, 60% of children must pay a fee to play sports at school. So it's definitely a huge budget crisis. And um, the reality of this situation is is that sports, though, they create a community for these kids. It, it gives them a safe exactly. place where they can learn a lot of life lessons, a safe place where they can experience success and failures. They can make friends. They can build mentors. And student athletes are actually four times more likely to attend college than non-student athletes because of some of these interventions that are put in place, because of some of these relationships that are put in place. And so what Dick Sporting Goods is trying to do through their sports matter is attack this issue head on. Wow. Yeah, Coach, this is me. Um, this is me. We, we noticed, I noticed in the documentary that, that, that you started coaching at King in a volunteer capacity, and you kind of explain that situation with the layoff. Um, you know, I, I, I commend you for your love of the kids as well as your love of the sports to be to do this outside of a paycheck because we know the type of time that you need to commit to a football program in order for it to be successful and, more importantly, to give to those children and for them to know that, that, that you care and that you're there for them and that the program is about, you know, kind of nurturing them because children feel that, you know. Um, what's the current budget situation in Philly, you know, looking like for the next school year, and how is your per- your job situation, you know, and, and, and not only yours but the other teachers and coaches on your staff? Like, is it still uncertain? Uh, the reality of the situation is that it's still a very tenuous situation, both for the budget, for for athletics. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we pretty much have to, you know, have our fingers crossed to make sure that that money comes through again. And also, even with our, our jobs and our employment, there there will be more layoffs, and that's just the reality of the situation given the budget crisis in, in Philadelphia with public education. However, uh, Dick Sporting Goods, who was kind of the, the I guess, the, the funding behind this movie and this project, actually did a great thing through their Sports Matter program, which is raising money and awareness for some of these underfunded athletic programs across the country, they actually donated $250,000 to the school district of Philadelphia to help and do their part in order to make sure that, that we will have football next year. So for next year, definitely uh, because of their contribution and contributions of others, uh, we're definitely going to have uh, sports next year. However, long term, this is definitely a long term issue that, that people really need to, you know, get involved in their community and, and have a voice to say, hey, this is something that's important to our community, this is something that's important to uh, public education, and that we need to make sure that it, it stays around. And so for people that actually want to get involved, learn more about the crisis, and even uh, c- contribute, they can actually go to sportsmatters.com, which is uh, Dick's website. And what they're doing on sportsmatters.com is you can actually donate money to uh, a underfunded sports program. And what Dick's is doing is they're going to match you dollar for dollar for your contributions to raise money for a variety of different programs, so not just football, but uh, every type of sport, every age group, so not just high school, all the way down to Pop Warner. Because a lot of times people forget about, you know, the Little League programs that that usually have as much impact and those relationships and do all the same things that a high school program does. So that runs the gambit of all sports, men and women and age groups. And so they're really trying to raise money uh to for these programs, but in addition to that, just spreading awareness so people really know that this is a crisis and it's not going anywhere. So people got to get involved, speak, you know, speak their voice and, and have an understanding of what's going on. Yeah, the um, the, the Dick Sporting Goods Foundation. They definitely say, you know, they believe in the power of sports to change lives. You know, as do we here, and you know, we can tell just by watching you um, in the documentary that you believe the same thing. Um, and you seem passionate about this whole thing, man, and and we we definitely appreciate that. Um, one more time, just let everybody know where they can, you know, find the, the Sports Matter campaign and, and give. Because you said Dix will give uh, dollar for dollar with the donations that they get. Are they still doing that, or was that just for correct, this coming? Correct, correct. Um, yeah, okay. They're, they're going to be – they've committed uh, – $25 million over the next couple of years to, to run the Sports Matter program and give back to uh, these programs. But in mm-hmm. their current cycle, this is uh, they're right at the end of their current cycle, uh, you actually have about 23 hours left to go on to sports, sportsmatter.com. 
uh, um, the deadline is May 23rd for any donations. And what they'll do is for every dollar that you donate to whatever program, they'll match it dollar for dollar. So if you donate 10, they'll add 10. And these different programs, you'll get a, a chance to learn about them and kind of what the service that they do for the community. And it's really a great program. And like I said, this is the last day for people to donate within this current cycle. But this is a program that they're going to be running year after year, year after year, so people can go to sportsmatters.com, not only to learn about the budget crisis, but also figure out how can they get involved and, and how they can tr- contribute. Okay, well, so we'll definitely be putting that information out on all of our social media sites and on our website to try to get, you know, our listening audience involved in all of that, man, because um, like we spoke about a few minutes ago, man, sports, it's it's way more necessary than just what people see on the surface. It's more than just games, you know. So there's a lot of team building going on there, and like you said, people get um, the kind of experience that you need to – a lot of times to be better people in life. So, you know, this this cause is definitely something that's, um, you know, it, it hits home for us. So, yeah, um, and one thing I just want to like throw okay, – go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, just one thing I want to throw out there is, you know, with the Sports Matter program, that's a great way to raise money. But I also want people mm-hmm. to, to be open to it. And I've even had some people come up to me and, and make this comment to me. Um, if you played sports or if you never even played sports, find a way to get involved in a local program, whether that be uh, volunteering as a coach, whether that's, uh, you know, helping out in the concession stands, whether that's even just attending the games. Right. And, you know, people underestimate how much – of a sports, especially in high school, how much of our budget is built around, you know, how many people actually come to our games. You know, so right. if, if you got, you know, kids that are involved or you are aware of a program in your neighborhood, stop by and say, hey, you know, what can I do? You know, maybe it's, it's buying a case of sodas for a little league program or, or just showing up and supporting a concession stand at a local football game. Those little things just to say, hey, I, this is important and I want to be involved and, and offering your services. You, you'll be surprised how much something that could be really small to you as an individual could be huge to a program, even if it's just words of encouragement. So I, I really want people that if they, they really buy into it, and I know your 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 listeners love sports and, and they love the conversation oh, yeah. that you guys have. If you want to see those things continue and see kids have access to them, get involved, man, and the little stuff can be huge in the grand scheme of things. No doubt, man. We definitely want to uh, thank you again for coming on and you know giving us a few minutes of your time. Um, to talk about this issue, um, man, good luck with the program, you know, with the school and everything moving forward. And, you know, when the, when the fall comes around and we're in the city, we'll definitely be in touch and we'll come by and Thank check you. out a few, a few of your games, man, root you guys on. Thanks, thanks. Except, except for maybe yeah. when you're playing Central, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you know how that goes. But, yeah. all right, man. So, salute, so, salute. Keep up the good work, Coach. We appreciate it, man. Salute. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, uh, take care. Once again, thank you. you man. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. That's Coach, Coach Dunn. Dunn, everybody. Wow. Uh, Martin Luther King High School football program in Philadelphia. If you haven't seen the documentary, We Could Be King, I'm not sure if uh, there are any future showings coming up this week. Or, yeah, it's, or it is. I checked. June. It's, com- it's coming oh, on this it Saturday because, I, I, yeah, okay. I, che- I checked uh, – you know, because it was very powerful, man. Got to watch it several more times, man. It's definitely powerful. And right. what's going on with the public schools, man, it's just so sad. But sports is very important. You know, I read a story today speaking of that because it's crazy when you look at some of the stuff that's taken out of the schools, right? I talked a little bit about the music. Like, you know, most schools in, in the city, uh, due to budget cuts, don't even have a nurse. Um, a little kid yeah. actually passed away today. He got sick and I ill in that. class, and there was no that. nurse there, yeah. and he died. Like, so I'm, I'm, I, a lot, I read that, Jim, and because somebody posted that somewhere, I think probably on Facebook or something like that, and people from outside of Philadelphia, you know, they were just coming to the to the post like, well, where was the nurse and and this and stuff like that, but. They, they don't really understand don't understand what's going down in the city right now. Yeah. Really so so the thing it. is, though, the, co- the one of the one of the points that the coach made was that, yo, if, if, the thing about it is people think that in order to do something you need money, and that's not always the case, man. Your time is just as valuable, if not more valuable. So, more so, you know, we try to do what we can. So those out there that can do anything, and this is not just Philadelphia, and we know that our listening audience is right. national. So, you know, to all the schools out there, just, just go and see what you can do. See if there's any way you can help. And yeah, we'll, we'll I, continue um, our series on all of this uh, next week with some educators from Chicago and and stuff like that. Oh man, yeah, Chicago. I, I, I just 
Yeah, I just wanted to to make a point, man. That the documentary was was a, a, a beautiful piece of work. Really appreciate what Coach Dunn is taking it upon himself to do. But I'm 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 angry, man. This shit is ridiculous, and, and that's the only <laughs> word that I. Can. How do you, how do you have a budget deficit and a shortfall for our children, for our children, like this? Like who screws up? this badly. You can blame... I mean, it, it, it's kind of like the credit crunch of 2008, 2009. There's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stakeholders that are that, that are culpable in all of this, whether it's the city of Philadelphia, whether it's the state of Pennsylvania. Hell, we can look at the federal government. How do you allow one of the top ten largest cities in the country to come to a point where it has to close 24 sure. schools? Yeah. Yeah. How do you I mean, and, 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 and when you bring well, up the state, you know, assistance isn't really coming from the state. Meanwhile, a $400 million prison complex is being built outside Y'all don't of want me to start going on that. You don't want me to start going in on that. I don't really want to get in my, my, my prison industrial I complex soapbox. Is Michael I, I, Jordan I got talking to invest in him? I'm sorry, go ahead. I got another, I got another one for you all. The, the the family that owns Walmart is opening billion dollar museums to their you know oh, yeah, right, to their right, benefit. Right, yeah. Like like there's plenty of money out here. What is it being spent on? Where is it going? Well, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, the system that's in place in this country, right? It it, it it's 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 put in place so there will be issues like this, right? Because Money's going to flow. Where is the money going to go? That's the thing. We always talk about we need more money. Actually, we need to spend our money smarter. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is, like I said, we also have to do more as people. Like, yo, your time is valuable. There's more that we can do. Like, Coach took it upon himself to do what he had to do, but imagine if everybody did that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, in the words of Mother Teresa, if everybody cleaned the front of their house, guess how much dirt we would have in the world? So, Everybody has something they can do. It's a matter of whether you get up and do it or not. You know, because even if, because a lot of times we look at money as being a problem. If we got a huge windfall of money, say in the in the school district, it still has to be spent the right way. Let's use the analogy of some teams, right? Let's let's look at what's going on in the NBA with the Cavaliers continually getting the first pick, continually spending money. If they don't spend it right, what does it matter? So that's something else that has to be thought about, you know. So that's why I say if you have time, dedicate that. Also your money. I mean, whatever you can do, but it has to be done right. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. No, I nah, move, on, to move, to the, um, move on. Digital Extreme Tech Hotline real quick because we got Tobias calling in all the way out from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, What's oh, going I, on? Roll I, tide. I that, boy. Roll <laughs> down tide, baby. What's going on? <laughs> How are you, much, Tobias? Man, how are you? Talk about right. today. Before I get going on my, my soapbox on how NBA gets a bad rap for tanking, the problem is that we talk about the people these money needs the system. Those who have the money that make the rules, and they're going to spend it as they fit. This country right. is run by corporations, and we as a people keep allowing them to do it. But, uh, but as I was saying about tanking, I thought about this sort of friend of mine. Everybody gets on NBA teams and tanking. There's no guarantee for the number one pick. But no one said a word when the Indianapolis Colts tanked for Andrew Luck. You know? <laughs> but, like, the, the NFL gets away with murder. They they tank. They treat their players like crap. But no one says a word. Cause I think because they like the NFL. But then the NBA, you got teams that just going for a shot just getting the top three. And a draft, with, in most drafts, has a pick five. Just getting guys to fill out your fence. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean I, I hear what you're saying, and it, yeah, it's crazy in the NBA in the NFL no because there is no lottery with the team. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But and, yeah. and people talk, people talk the NBA. I say if they want to cure this so-called tanking, how about you don't make it so hard for teams to get out from under mistakes they make in free agency or the draft, like my Bulls. We will suck with Carlos Bulls for five years. <laughs> Hey, I was waiting NFL, for it to come back to the Bulls somehow, Tobias. I knew you were going to bring this back hey, to the Bulls. I just hey, didn't know didn't how. Why didn't they use that amnesty on them, though? They had a chance hey, to get rid of right. their contract. I'm going to say this. 
I'm tired of these Bulls fans thinking the next Euro flavor of the month, Nikola Meritage, whatever his name is, is going to save the day when a scouting report said he's a Hito Turkulu guy. He's like Hito Turkulu. Yeah. But I just feel <laughs> like, you know, I just feel like that the NBA is a bad up. rap for the stuff because it's so hard to get rid of your players. Hell, the salary's got a match. Let's just say well, the I mean, want to trade Sotomayor. I'll say this real quick. No, all, all I'm saying is there there, there are two different yeah. systems in place in terms of how the NBA runs, um, you know, its business as well as the NFL. Um, yeah. And also, when you talk about the NBA gets a bad rap, that's because football is football. Football is king in this country. So yeah. Yeah. there are a lot of things wrong with football. Think about this. I mean, we, we basically have guys who are giving themselves um, early onset Alzheimer's every Sunday, and we love it in this country. I mean, this is this is what it is. I mean, and football is king, so it won't take the same criticism. Pound for pound, I think basketball is honestly the single greatest sport that we have. My, this is my personal opinion. And the reason I say that is because any, any and everyone can, can like, you know, shoot a hoop, right? Everyone won't have the experience of playing organized football, but there, there are a lot of, like, ways that you can go to the playground and have an organized I mean, Thing about basketball, it's a beautiful sport. It's the reason it travels the way it does across, like you know, the country, and why we have so many players from all over the world. But in America, football is king. They can get away with doing pretty much anything they want to do. So it won't have the same sort of criticism because we want more of it. The NFL draft comes on in the middle of the playoffs and will outrank the NBA playoffs. <laughs> yeah, the draft, yeah, uh, just the draft. <laughs> we talking about round you do four. You go up on stage and shake hands. <laughs> no, we, we we sit there and watch cats go up on stage, we're so on stage and shake hands because our country is just we're so in love with football. That's you know when you think about it, that literal that's what we do. We cut we tune on to watch jokers yo, wear their best suit yo. and go shake somebody's hand. We love football I'm that tuning much. I'm to watch you shake the great master's hand. Yo. Oh, yeah, I, got, I got I got more for your money this year, Michael Sam. Yeah. Oh, you got you more than a handshake. Hey. Yeah, we tune in to watch handshakes and watch men make out now these days. But I'm just saying, like, this is this is what football is, man. Football dominates in this country. Um, what, so football is men making out. So the thing about it is, I, and I understand your point. No one gets talks about football teams tanking, and they generally don't, because all we care about is like you know touchdown. So, but uh, and the thing about the NBA is, there's a lottery, so it doesn't even matter if you tank. Because, I mean, the Sixers tried everything in their power to get the first pick. I mean, if you had a game where you scored double figures, they were trading you. (laughs) All I know is that the number two pick is six eight. You think people are mad Cleveland got number one pick? The number two pick is six off because, man, I got to live in Milwaukee for five years. No no offense to the good people in Milwaukee, but let's be honest. No one's clamoring to move to Milwaukee out of college. I just be honest. Uh, but I say yeah, this, and I know got other people. I gotta say this, I gotta go to other, we gotta go to other people. Uh, I hear everybody getting like, like, like uh, your boy Mark Cuban and stuff. My thing is, be a, if you don't want to vote Donald Sterling out, just be a man about it. Just say it. You know, stop, stop tiptoeing. I don't feel like he should have been losing team over words. They still lost his team years ago for being a slumlord and a bigot for like be using racism to keep their home. I was discrimination, but. I just feel like these owners, just be, if you want the man to stay, just be man enough to say it. Stop tipping. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't, want, they don't want the backlash that comes with that. And I think that there is probably a bunch of owners who don't want him to lose his team because they don't want yep. it, um, that precedent to be set because they know that they got like you know some skeletons in their closet. But they saw what happened to him. Whoa. They saw what happened like through public sentiment. Whoa. So they're not going to come out and say that, even if they feel that way. David Stern and Adam Silver have sat down. They discussed it, and they're going to give your boy Donald Sterling a great economic package for his uh, a golden parachute. And they're even going to they're even going to calm uh, our, our our guy um, Mark Cuban down because the goal here is to in, is to find a way to increase the value of these franchises with Donald Sterling's exit, and and that's going to be done by putting a new franchise in Seattle and getting the franchisee fee up to about a billion dollars. So your man Donald Sterling is probably going to be able to dump with the Clippers for more than a billion dollars. Adam Silver's already setting it up. It, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to watch what's going on behind the scenes. Amazing. Yeah, 
and I say this, and that's how that and that kind of circles back to y'all conversation with the coach and everything. These people with the money, they create the rules. Even like these owners, they create the rules because they have the money, they have the power. Because look at what happened in the lockout. Well, we just won't pay. You. Guess who pays the player? With this stuff here, Donald Seller, they can't, they can't just get rid of him. They have to hope he sells his team, and they're going to try to sweep the pot so he can sell his team. But let LeBron James, you know, or one of these guys say a homophobic slur or, like, a, uh, you know, say something racist or whatever. He saw the hammer come down on Kobe because of that real quick. There was no deliberation or, or bylaws. That was some new stuff. So you see who really has the power in this stuff. No, no, he didn't, insult, he didn't insult the cult. He insulted uh, the gay. A rep. And so, yeah. yeah, so when you insult them, that's that's a little different than, than just, you know, regular bigotry now in this day and age. That can get you killed. Yeah, and you lose a job because now you see like this Michael Sam thing. They were scouring the net to find someone that says something somewhat negative. I didn't know who the hell John <laughs> Jones was. <laughs> yeah, you know what, though? It, 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 yo, that's that's funny that you say that because I was thinking the same thing when it came out. Like, yo, who is he anyway? Like, so you, you got you made a great point there, man. Tobias, man, thanks for your call as always, man. Tune in next week, you know, and, and give oh, us a call God. back then, man. We appreciate your support, man, and um, you know, we'll talk to you, good brother. All right, roll tide, baby. Woo! You oh, already know. Tide. Take it easy, homie. Take it easy. Yo, I thought about that though. Like, who is this guy, and why? Why is his tweet like? Anything that we should be paying attention to. <laughs> All right, well, we can continue on this uh, NBA wrap, but before we do that, y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com. Just call in and speak with us about any of today's topics. Dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline at 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. You already know it's time to talk basketball, which is brought to you by Fanatics. For the best in your favorite team's merchandise and apparel, shop Fanatics. Shopping Fanatics is easy. Go to our website, which is warmsports.com, and click on the Fanatics logo. You can cop some NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, and NCAA gear. I'm about to bring the hockey jerseys back because they used to be that work. Y'all remember that? We used to rock hockey jerseys. Anyway, man, go to Fanatics and get that at warmsports.com and click right on the Fanatics logo. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I used to have me the Yamin little Eric Lindros John, you know what I'm saying? But um, Eric Lindros was that work. Anyway, gentlemen. That's what he's trying to buy. That's the only duty he knows. Yeah, pretty Wayne much. Wayne Gretzky. Mario Lemieux. Although, I know Mario although my favorite Lemieux. hockey player of all time was Ron Hextall. Got to keep it a bean. Um, anyway, <laughs> speaking of the NBA and the draft lottery, uh, as Tobias just brought up how, you know, teams get criticized, doesn't even matter because Cleveland's going to win the first pick anyway. The Cleveland Cavaliers win the draft lottery for the third time in four years. W-T-F. Gentlemen, when you first saw this, especially, especially like, you know, you guys are Sixers fans, right? I'm a Lakers fan. We all were in the lottery, uh. You know, sort of like Doc said, like all the good teams from the '80s was all up front of the lottery. But um, <laughs> but uh, being a Sixers fan, when you saw the Sixers come up at three, and you had, you were one of the last three teams left to get that first pick, and when you see Cleveland get it, how does that feel? Man, I was you know I was watching, bated breath, fingers crossed. Um, I definitely was disappointed. I mean, the Sixers came out with three and ten because of New Orleans pick. So I mean I think at three and ten you're gonna get some good players, but I'm like, damn, Cleveland again. I was sitting there, I was tweeting, I had made the comment that Dan Gilbert decided not to exploit his son this year, and even without his son, they still had enough luck to go in there and get it. So you know, as soon as that happened, everybody, the conspiracy theorists, came out, and you know everybody thinks that they're still being paid back for LeBron leaving, and everybody's jumping on this new bandwagon of. Oh, with Kyrie and two more number one picks to the Lord LeBron back to Cleveland. I say FOH to that. Why would he go back to Cleveland? Yeah. But, B. Austin, what did you think when, first of all, when they said the Sixers and they said three and they called the Sixers, and that def- I know that deflated your balloon. <laughs> and then Cleveland Yo. gets the number one pick again. 
I, was, I at least wanted I, two. It, it two would have been cool. It didn't deflate. It didn't deflate my balloon because the top three players that I think will get picked are I, I like them all. Like I, I like them. All. I'm not a big big fan of Wiggins, but I, I like his game. I like. I think it'll translate better to to. Uh, I want, I to want Andrew Wiggins, and I think three takes us out and, of that sweepstakes. Uh, it's still feasible because he's not going to go one. In, in, in bid is going to be. I, I don't believe that thing. though. I don't believe that. Oh, okay. I think uh, I, I think that's smoke and mirrors. I think everybody's just talking that talk. <laughs> when it comes down to it, they're going to take the person with the most upside. The reason why to, three to, to answer your question, to okay. answer your question though, with, with with Cleveland, I really do believe at this point that there's some shenanigans going on behind the scenes. David Stern, who who by the way still runs the league, David Stern, Adam Silver, and Dan Gilbert. <laughs> Yo, they had that meeting in the back room. They decided what it was going to be, and they said to Dan Gilbert, they said, look, this is the last time. We can't do this anymore for a couple of years. <laughs> so slot us that manila envelope with y'all don't in get him, and If y'all don't get him no, back I mean, after this season. My whole <laughs> thing is this, though, like, and I'm all for a great conspiracy theory, but man, you when I was watching man, this. You don't know nothing about the draft lottery. No, but here's my point, though. If, if 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 could you imagine the backlash of the Lakers would have somehow got the number one pick? Like, if you're, already, if you're going to continue, we asked the question five minutes before the uh, the before the uh, draft lottery. Um, just a wild guess who's going to get the number one pick, and at least five people immediately said the Lakers because they thought it was rigged. <laughs> but that's my point. Like, if you're going to rig it and you really want to go for a conspiracy, like, nobody wants the number one pick to go to – nobody wants Wiggins in Cleveland. That That's not good for the league. I mean, bread. when you look at the – when you look at the three – did that bread, but look how much bread you can make on the – when you when I saw the last three teams, I was like, the league wants the Sixers to get the pick. Out of Milwaukee, Cleveland, and Philadelphia, here's the one thing I can say about my hometown city, right? It's – it, no matter no matter what you say about us as sports Basketball fans, history. when we have an exciting player or a winner, we support. Like we support yeah. great. Yo, know, the amount of money they made from Allen Iverson, as much as they you know talk about what he brought to the game in terms of culture and and what kind of a person he was. Yo, NBA caked off on Allen Iverson. I mean, the yeah, Sixers games were sold out and the team stunk. I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, so the Sixers games were sold out when Allen Iverson came back from Memphis. When he was a shell of his former self, yo, the game yeah, started looking like the late the 90s same, again. Yo, when he lost his powers, like that uh, Kevin Durant movie, when he lost his powers <laughs> to a high school to a high school player, like the the teams were still selling out because yo, we support we when we when we mess with you, we mess with you, yo. And it is what it is, but nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, thunderstruck. No one cares about um, yo. In the words of Joe Kim Noah, like yo, nobody vacations in Cleveland, be like. Yo, there's no history to go see in Cleveland. Like nobody cares about Cleveland. Like that's bad. Yeah, I don't even. And nobody, nobody wow. cares. Milwaukee. Yeah, I don't even go there. Like on on flight. Fly over no city, more. B. Yo, my 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 sister works for for United Airlines. So when I fly, you know, Cleveland's one of their hubs. So you know, if I gotta get somewhere, that's you know, a lot of times that's the easiest place. Like you can go through Cleveland and get to where you need to go. Yeah, you, 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 I don't even want to connect in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, yeah nobody <laughs> cares about Cleveland, man. I mean, so I, I, I don't, don't think the fix was in. Yeah, I'm not necessarily all in with the conspiracy theories either, but man, I, I'm, I'm saying, just like, more worried about my disappointment. But. <laughs> Yeah, they, and there were there were teams that if they they would have came up out of them like ooh like what if the Celtics would have got the pick? I mean, it, there's more conspiracy there for yo, the Celtics. I mean, for yo, the Celtics Bill, Lakers. Yo, like, Bill Simmons had a connection Nick. on air. Yeah, yeah like, like for me, I'm gonna I'm take it back to uh, the 76ers. Like three and ten, I'm 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 definitely satisfied. I mean, if they flip that right, you can get good players. I just have a feeling. I would rather have two, you know, if we weren't going to get the first pick because it's like, okay, if they take Wiggins, then okay, we can we can probably take Parker, something like that. Or if they happen to go crazy and take Embiid or Parker or somebody, then we'll luck up and get Wiggins. I just don't see getting the player that I necessarily want at three, and I still think that the Sixers might run the risk of, the first two teams taking Wiggins and Parker, and they go MB with the third pick. As much as, you know, pundits have started to say, well, he could be the number one pick in the draft, 
I'm not necessarily looking for a project, a guy who hasn't played organized ball that long, who has a bad back. We already have a person who was supposed to be the number one pick, who sat out the whole his whole rookie season. I'm not really looking for any more injury projects or any more, you know, this guy only started playing organized basketball three years ago, but his upside, I don't want any of that. I want so basically, to so basically when now. it comes to when it comes to the big when it comes to the big fella, you like you like Harry Allen, like you just don't believe yeah. the hype right now, like. Nah, I, I don't yeah. believe the hype because I'm I'm because I'm thinking if he's available at three and Wiggins and Park is already gone, I think it's almost a given that the Sixers are going to take him. At that point, I probably would rather have Randall than than him. Yo, and, mm. and there's a lot of people out there listening that let's, probably don't agree with me, but I don't trust let's back get injuries into that, for one. Yeah, yeah. let's don't get into that because. Injuries. Well, first off, for those who don't get the Harry Allen, um, you know, thing, uh, do your homework. Yeah, Google Harry Allen. I ain't here to teach y'all. <laughs> but listen, um, Randall, it's interesting you bring that up because uh, Skyview Kevin says he thinks the Sixers will end up with Julius Randall. Um, I don't know if they'll take him at Randall. three. Huh. Um, as a Lakers fan, that's who I wanted. Like to me, yeah. watching these guys play, and I watched all these guys seven, play in college. He won't go to seven. I know that's what's pissing me off because yo, Julius Randall to me was the best player coming out. I understand the upside of Wiggins and all that, but Randall looked like an NBA player already. When I watched him play, like, yo, dude is ready right now to ball. This dude looks like a Randall, young Moses Malone. Like, yo, yo, is he? Yo, and it's like, <laughs> this is the guy I wanted. Now, he probably won't, like, I saw people say, well, the Lakers will get him at seven. I saw a couple of people saying four. that. He won't make it past four. I don't think make so. it past four. I can't see it. I can't see it. Because I saw some people putting that other, uh, what's the point guard's name? They put him up there. But from all, from Excellent. all accounts. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I saw some people saying that he was four. Um, so, from all accounts, this is supposed to be a very good and deep draft, and this is yeah. this will be one of the more exciting drafts because this draft has been hyped for a couple of years at this point. Um, yeah. You know, we all have the guys we watch playing college. Can come out good at three and ten, but I don't want the. And, and then when you look, the then when you look, they already have they already back. have the they already have the rookie of the year. You add in two top players in this draft, two top ten players. If you if you play your cards right, you know. Keep and that and Nolan's one. Noel. And Noel. Nolan's Noel coming Still back, coming which back. is like having another number one pick. And mm-hmm. you sign one veteran. Like, you're in the Eastern Conference. You should be competing for the playoffs right away. I mean, because yeah. you, know, you can make the team. Eastern Conference playoffs with a losing record. <laughs> <laughs> that team, like, a team with a bunch of young talent, they can at least make a push for eighth. You know, the whole experience factor might leave them on the outside looking in. But the Sixers also have some money to play around with in the in the off season. And though you know Philly is not really a magnet for big time free agents, they should be able to land to somebody. You know, tier tier two, tier three star to go along gotta, with these young players that will make the team Austin, competitive. Right? In the Eastern Conference. B. Austin, I got a question for my yes, brother sir. B. Austin, man. All right, let's say the Sixers let make two solid picks, right? Let's say they get Parker at three and whoever at ten, another solid pick, and they go to get they go to free agency. Let's say LeBron James comes to Philly, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> what will your feeling be considering you've been like a arch enemy of LeBron James? Um, would you still uh, criticize LeBron James if he became a Sixer? No. Let me correct this, man. It's not that I hate. There's only one athlete, embarrassed as I am, to say that I really hate. And we all know who that is. His name doesn't need to be mentioned. I just hate what LeBron stands for. His generation, okay. where he comes from, super team. <laughs> you hate not the whole being generation. all that competitive. Just, all right, yeah, I get like, all that. But if he signs with the Sixers, what, what happens then? Because... I, w- I would be I would be able I would be able to get behind that and support it, Paul. He said I, I, I can make bygones. Bygones could be bygones. <laughs> bygones. Yeah, I can I can I can yeah I can get behind. That would be behind. hilarious. That's I know that, that would be like yo. Team unless he bought somebody winning. Hey, look, we got a super team for the draft, and uh, I mean, for all accounts though, when you look at where the Sixers were a couple of years ago, this new uh, management. And see me making all the right moves because they're they're in a good spot right now with these two picks, the Yo. rookie of the year playing in the East. I mean they've done a great job in a couple of years, so shout out yeah. to them for that. And, and and Jimmy, you know how it goes, man. Sports, all sports, but of course basketball as well. Everything's cyclical. So while they get all of this young talent, 
and, and, and try to nurture it and bring it up and just wait for teams like Miami and, and I can't even say another team. They wait for teams like Miami to get old because, you know, nobody Brooklyn. else is really out there. Yeah. I, it's I funny, though. The first Brooklyn, time Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yeah, but Brooklyn, Brooklyn to me doesn't count because they just threw that team together for this year anyway. So that team really doesn't I was count laughing. to me as one somebody, of the older somebody teams. Somebody hit me up on Google+. Plus, like when Cleveland got the first pick, they was like, okay, so now who is Cleveland going to draft to leave them in free agency in a couple of years? Like people don't even think nobody <laughs> wants to stay in Cleveland regardless of uh, whoever it is. And by the yeah. way, we got a comment for you in the uh, chat room, Dev. Uh, Skyview Kevin mm-hmm. wants you to know that Hakeem Olajuwon was still playing soccer at 19. Yeah, so Hakeem Olajuwon. Joe and me, and Kim Olajuwon. Now name, now name, name the, name the, name the six. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell them Hakeem. to name the sixty-three other projects that came after Hakeem that you know <laughs> that, Hashim, that he's Hashim not mentioning. Yeah. Hashim name the sixty-three <laughs> other projects. Don't don't go, don't take me all the way back to nineteen eighty-five. <laughs> name an NBA <laughs> legend. That's a Yo, long time Hashim, ago, dog. <laughs> Hashim, some sheep was playing soccer then too. But yo, real quick though, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then Hashim is still some deep, sheep. Let, let's let's do a couple things real quick. We already talked about the draft. Um, a couple things I want to uh, rapid fire at you guys. Man took me back like thirty. <laughs> Steve Kerr, right? <laughs> Steve Kerr. Um, it's not Hakeem anyway. Hakeem is now an ambassador to Africa for the NBA. He just got that position. So shout out to all the old legends from no. our days, um, collecting six figure checks just for the name. Spiritual leader. Like Dr. J getting a check for being whatever kind of title he got. So shout out to all the players from our generation <laughs> getting these checks. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, like you said, Goonie Google. <laughs> Yo, Steve Kerr. Mecca lecca high, make a hiney ho. Yo, with Steve Kerr gone, right? <laughs> yo, by the way, that's only funny because yo, I heard Royce the Five Nine use that in a bar. I said, how did he find oh, he a way did? to use that oh, in man. a rap? I yes, haven't he heard did. that. Mecca lecca high, make a hiney ho. That new slaughterhouse yo. mixtape is flame. Anyway, real quick though, gentlemen, <laughs> Steve <laughs> Kerr is gone. The Knicks are now waiting to talk to Derek Fisher. What do you think about this new trend of getting guys like you know fresh <laughs> off the uh, the bench playing and naming them as coaches? Go ahead, Derek Fisher is he, he, light because he's not even good. <laughs> I mean, what they got to do with being a coach man. though? Yeah, <laughs> because he, you know what? All right, all right. So in a, in a Kevin Ollie scenario, Kevin Ollie was so bad you can understand how he's good as a coach. Derek Fisher was just good enough where you can't give him the he was on the bench the whole time watching the game and learning. Because he actually still gets clocked at, at 48. 48 years of age, he still gets clocked. So I, I don't that know. Tell, what does that, what does that tell you about their bench, that this guy can come <laughs> in and get a lot of clock? That's why no, he gets a lot right of now. But here's the here's my um, thing, right? Um, I'll be very brief with this. I actually like I it. Cool. I got tired of the whole like the roller coaster, uh, or should I say, revolving door of the NBA? Like, well, you know, you you get coaches who've been the everywhere re-coaching. and you just keep hiring. Shout out to Rick Adelman. Shout out to Dunleavy Jr. Like, I swear, Rick Adelman and Dunleavy Jr. have coached every team in the league at this point, and you you get tired of that. Like Mike Brown and, is and, probably going to be a Lakers coach again. Like some uh, Lakers play right now. His name and see, this is what I'm saying. Lakers. Like, you keep hiring the same guys. Mike Brown, the greatest interviewer ever, has, like, you know, coached multiple teams in the last couple of seasons. So I like this new approach of getting, like, new guys in the mix. But, you know, we'll see what happens. What do you think, Dev? Uh, oh, Austin, what do you say? You think it's corny? Yeah, I think it's corny. I'm probably biased because I don't like the dude, but. I, now, I, me, it's, it's, it's two sides of this coin because – there's still new guys to be had that's sitting on benches and been putting in work for a long time. They saw it? Um, but I know. They, they probably saw it <laughs> as hell, but I'm not completely Shut against it because loop. I'm not one of those people who thinks that experience, you know, is is the end-all, be-all as far as coaching is concerned. You know, if you're smart and you know the game of basketball, you know, the only thing you have to learn is the dynamics of, you know, the stuff that goes outside of X and O, you know, like Jason Kidd has to learn, I'm pretty sure. And that's things like um, just handling players, being that young, making sure you get that kind of respect, you know, the travel, the rigors of travel, but you've done that because you're a player. Um, in the Derek Fisher case, though, and, and it's not taking a, a shot at him, I just think Phil Jackson is so pressed right now to run this organization himself 
He just wants to put a puppet, his guy, you know, into the mix, basically to do what he wants to do and be the ones to take take the road trips. I mean, I've heard Luke Walton's name, and you know, people laugh their heads off when they heard that. Hey, we don't know if he can be a good coach or not, but it's the names that keep coming up that just makes you know that Phil just wants to put a figurehead in the spot. So he might be doing these guys an injustice. He's the one. Yo, he's Phil. the reason that Steve Kerr's you know a bidding war started over Steve Kerr. Now you got yeah, Fisher, he getting everybody Luke rich. Walton. You still getting everybody paid, man? Right, right, right. And, and they even talk Yo, about not bringing Scotty Pippen Derek in Fisher as, up, as in some kind of capacity. But I know we have. Yo, time. Derek Fisher going to end up coaching somewhere else with a nice size check because of Phil. <laughs> like, yo, Scotty going to be his, uh, his. Scotty going to be his assistant coach. Scotty going to be salty about. Shout out to Phil Jackson for still helping our community by getting us nice size checks. <laughs> nice size play, <laughs> Keisha. Yeah. Nice size. Check, anyway, man. Keisha. <laughs> yo, I gotta catch up to these references though. But um, yo, we gotta get out of here anyway, man. So shout out to Kevin Love for testing free agency. We didn't even talk about the conference finals. Um, you know, two zero first vision. beating beating on the Thunder. Yeah, check us out at Court Vision, man. We are gonna break all that down, man. Let's get out of here. Thanks everybody for joining us again in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, those on Facebook, the Twitter, uh, the ads we got, all the calls that chimed in. We appreciate that. Tune in next week, same time, same place. Or to the coach. Sports Podcast Network. Also, shout out to the coach, man. Coach Dunn, keep doing your thing, man. And we're going to, you know, do what we can do. And uh, next week we'll continue our discussion about youth sports in America and the effects it has on kids in lower-income areas. We'll be joined by educators and youth advocates from lower-income areas in the U.S., uh, a couple people from Chicago. So we're your bulletproof vest when you tune in. Until then, enjoy these <laughs> playoffs, NBA and NHL. <laughs> Facebook and Twitter at War Room Sports. Love Our videos Sosa. warroomsportstv.com. <laughs> they all love Sosa. <laughs> don't forget WRSPN.com. And until next time, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. Rest in peace, big. As we always say, we'll see you chumps on top. We to are dirt. out of here. I, I'm, I'm drawing right now because I ain't had a joint queued up. Y'all know what it is. Chop! Kill him. So are you saying that African Americans don't contribute to their to African American communities as much as Jewish? There's people no African American. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. War Room Sports. www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.